What it do, people? How's everybody doing today? Got uh, Hello. Corin here with us for another lovely and brilliant episode of Kyle and Corin. Did I just call our show lovely and brilliant? That's pretty weird. Um, That's a nice compliment, though. It is, but it's kind of strange to refer to ourselves as lovely and brilliant when we look like two bums right now who just came off the street. Yeah, for real. I think you you pull off you pull off the scruffy shit. look better than me, though. I think. You don't think so? Yeah. No, my scruff. I've been told that I should keep it on my face because when I shave, I look just like just weird. Yeah, but I, I look too fucking scruffy. Like when I I feel like when I have a combo with, with someone with the beard on my face. I'm like, this person definitely thinks I'm just a schlubby, like, just fucking, like, no good person. But I'm like, <laughs> no, it's it's for, people have told me, like, I want to give them research behind my beard before we start our combo. No, you, uh, you pull off the beard look, um, solid. Like, beards are in now, so, like, women, I think, like yeah. dudes with beards, and, but you gotta have the right, like, face for it, and you gotta have the right consistency of your hair. Like, you know how some people... Like, they'll get the peach fudge fuzz, and they never go out of the peach fuzz phase. And, like, other people, like me, I'm patchy, but at least my patchiness yeah. is even. Like, Yeah, right there, no, it's, like, symmetrical. Yeah, it's symmetrical patchy. So I could pull mm -hmm. it off, but it's still, I don't like, you know, this is a weird thought, but I've had it a few times. I feel like mm -hmm. eyelashes, like, are, it, it feels like eyelashes come out of my face. Like, that's what my <laughs> facial hair fe feels like. And it kind of grosses me out because eyelashes are weird to begin with. But then, like, to yeah. feel like it's the exact same kind of hair growing out of your face, and then I think to myself, why can't I have, like, a cool, like... Like some thick... Is, isn't there stuff to help, like, thicking your beard? Don't they make stuff for that? Yeah, but using that would just be, like, admitting I'm a bitch. <laughs> like you, Let me ask you, if you went bald, uh -huh. I feel like every bald guy has some type of, like, short beard going on, like, to cope for them not having hair on top of their head. Yeah, that's a good point. I never thought of that before. If I go bald, like I would definitely do something here, but it's just so it's so weird to see someone bald and then just like starting right here. It's yeah. like murs mad hair. No, you got to do the Walter White, the Walter White from Breaking Bad. How he he had yeah, what is the goatee and the sh shaved over here and then obviously the bald head. And he looked better yeah, with the bald decent. head than he did with like hair. When he had hair, yeah. he looked like the bitch like teacher he was, but then when he shaved his <laughs> head, he looked like a badass. That's true. So the one hairstyle I would never do is the Mr. Wonderful, like, bowl-shaped shit with it just, like, in the back of your head. Wait, why I'd am I blanking on Mr. That. Wonderful? Who's Mr. Wonderful? I should know this, shouldn't I? From uh, Shark Tank. Oh, yeah, I don't watch Shark Tank. Like, that explains it. <laughs> <laughs> but the bowl but cut. you've seen that hairdo. Yeah, oh, like hair dude. that just goes in the U-shape. No, but back back in the day, you you remember the uh, the Nick Carter haircut from back in the Backstreet Boys days in, like, the 90s? Like the like actual bowl cut, but with hair. I think I don't know if it's a bowl cut or if it's just like he had a part in the side and the hair just like. Oh yes, you remember that, right? Yep. yep I yep. I had that back in the day, and it was. I mean, we. I thought it was the shit when I had it. Like, yeah, this is this is the haircut right here. But then you look mm -hmm. back and you're like, oh, 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 no, stop, oh, just stop. Mm -hmm. Like it looks grotesque, and I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. It's so weird how hairstyles like it's just basically you do whatever the fuck you want, and if it catches on, it's like go with like dreadlocks or like now there's like that afro that is like sort of like it's like a nappier afro right yeah just it's the natural like, the natural natural afro yeah. look yeah yeah it's, it's weird how styles come and go yeah i mean there was a time when like the the fucking the jesus hair was in <laughs> like, like just the long, the long shit. like girly yeah. hair on dudes that was one you remember back when we were we were in high school everybody had the tape up the blowout the, yep, the tape up yep. the blowout i had that forever if you're it, a redneck you got to have some type of mullet some sort of mullet yeah some sort of mullet yeah it's strange how that works isn't it how certain things like it'll blow up and then it'll just go away and then you'll well it's all almost, it takes is like one rapper to like like come back with a mullet and every kid in school would just be like i'm doing it I'm yeah gonna get it no yeah it's got to be somebody who leads the charge and then does it but it's funny how like we can all look back on it and and look at the old styles and just go Oh, what were we thinking? Like it's it's yeah. never nobody ever looks back at a style and is like nailed it. Like they fucking nailed it in 1957. Like no, you look at it and mm -hmm. you're always like, oh. <laughs> it's weird how they always do that. Like I was just watching. Uh, I think it was Jimmy Fallon and he brought back his yearbook photo and like the Rock's yearbook photo, and they both just had awkward hairstyles and looked mad awkward. Yeah. Like why couldn't someone just be like a G in like the past? 
and show a picture and still be like, no, that still would fit today. No, I'm going to be a little insufferable right now. I look sort of G in my high school picture still. So, yeah, but you like you had like just a gangster like the same type of hairstyle you have now. N- no, it, you know what it is in my What's high that? school picture. I don't know. I think this happened by accident, but I'm happy it happened. Like you know how when I would have the the blowout and the and the tape up, like mm-hmm. it would be a lot of gel and it would be really spiky. But I I had just gotten a haircut for that picture, and mm-hmm. so it was re- it was short. So spiking it up when it's that short, it doesn't look obnoxious. It just looks like normal. But if it got mm-hmm. if it was like you know. If it was like double its length as it was in the picture, I would look like a douche. But I didn't look like a douche because I had just gotten a haircut. And so it was like fresh on the sides, like freshly faded on the sides. And then it was just like spiked up top. And back then in high school, I was, I mean, if you look at a picture of me now and compare it to me in high school, I look like a fat ass now. But it's not that I'm a fat ass now. It's that I was a really skinny dude in high school. Like, you remember how skinny... Mm-hmm. You were skinny, too. Me and you were both super skinny in high school. Yeah, but I feel like our bodies are just, like, naturally growing still. Like, it's not like we're... Yeah, we were pretty skinny, but we were accurate to what other high schoolers were. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. But there was also, like, right after that, right after, like, the, that high school picture and that high school era, like, in college is when I started actually working out, mm-hmm. and I went to the gym a lot, and I, I did beef up a lot. So did you. I mean, we've mm-hmm. we've had gym phases where it was like, oh, so that's your the thing you're obsessed with, and all you do is go to the gym, and yeah. it really is a huge like you could see like, oh, I weighed like fucking 140 at this time, and then you fast forward like a year, and it's like, oh, you're all of a sudden like 172. Like, what the fuck happened there? It's like, well, yeah. I ate a shitload and I kept working out, and back then, like you could eat anything, and the, where you gain the weight is all the good places. Like oh you're you know you're doing you're doing chest you're doing back you're doing arms and like everything you eat just seems to go to that those places. <laughs> yep. And then as you get Where's older, that reverses. Like, oh it my starts... god! It just goes straight to my ass. No, but as we as we get older, it goes right to our bellies. At least that's what happened was happens with me. Like I'm like oh shit! Like I need to get to the gym now because if I eat some shit now, it doesn't go to the right places. It's like let me just settle right here in the belly zone and make you feel like a fucking gross person. <laughs> Because that's kind of true, <laughs> but yo, yeah, I mentioned I mentioned Walter White there. Um, mm-hmm. I actually finished Breaking Bad. I did last night. You finished the whole, last week. You weren't even like close to done. So you just finished like season three. So what I did so. is at the end of every day. So I finished working at like twelve o'clock at night or one o'clock in the morning, and I would just say, okay, I'm just gonna watch one one episode, and then I'll go to sleep. And it would mm-hmm. be one episode would become. All right, I'm just gonna watch one more. I'll watch two, and then I'll go to sleep. And then after I watched two, I'd be like, well, I'm not even really that tired. So let me just watch three and then I'll go to sleep. And so I watched like three episodes a night or maybe even sometimes four episodes a night. And That's how it happens. And yesterday I really kind of binged on it. And um, so I saw, I, I now watched the whole thing. So spoiler alert for everybody. Think, dude? I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was a fucking awesome show. I, I'm curious to see, like I want to, I wish I already knew the ending of The Walking Dead, even though it's not over. So I could compare mm-hmm. and contrast in my own mind as to which one I think is better. But um, the thing that I liked about Breaking Bad, like thinking back on it, and I was having a conversation with somebody else about this too, is every character, I went back and forth on almost every character. Like there were times <laughs> where, like Jesse, for example, I was like, yo, fuck him. Like he's like a lost kid and he's a dick and like, fuck him. But then there were times where I'm like, oh, Jesse, fucking poor Jesse. Like he's put in this situation and now he's got to deal with it. And he's a good guy. He doesn't really mean any bad. With Walt, at times I'm like, man, yeah, go ahead, Walt, do you, because you know what, you were a fucking chemistry teacher, and you know, you got lung cancer, and you don't have shit to leave your kids, and you feel like you didn't have a legacy and shit, so you know what, mm-hmm. Walt, yeah, do you, man, like, go ahead, do your, you're doing it for good reason, so I see why you're doing it, but then there's other times I'm like, oh, fuck you, you're a monster, Walt, with your fucking pulling these manipulative things and fucking killing people and shit, and it was like that with almost every character, so uh, Hank, so his brother-in-law, who's the, who was the DEA guy, there were times yeah. where I'm like, yo, fuck this guy. He's like a meathead cop who like just follows the rules and doesn't even think about if it's moral or not. And he's arresting kids for like weed and shit. And then there are other times where I'm like, oh, Hank, he's the only fucking moral character on the show. And with his wife, there were times with his wife, I'm like, oh, I feel bad for her, man. She's like the shit she's been put through and yada, yada. And then uh, there are other times where I'm like, yo, fuck her. Like, why does she got to act like this? So I, and then I was thinking about it. That's the brilliance of the show is that it, it kind of mimics Obviously, it's exaggerated, but it kind of mimics like what real life is like in many ways. How, Mm -hmm. 
Like, you have really complex characters who are dynamic and have so many angles to them where you can't, like, you just can't put your finger on it and say, I'm with that person or I'm against that person. Throughout the whole show, it's like an evolution. You go back and forth. I don't know about this. I don't know about that. Like, there were times within the same episode I'd go back and forth on characters. So, like, yep. towards the end when, you know, uh, they pull that move on Walt where they tell him, uh, where Jesse pretends he knows where the money is and then Walt, like, basically takes them to the money in the desert and they trick him into it. Like, at the beginning of that episode, I was thinking, like, yo, fuck Walt. He poisoned that kid. Like, what the fuck is wrong with him? But then when they trapped him and when Hank and Jesse, like, got him, I was like, yo, fuck them. Like, give him a break. <laughs> and then and then right at, when that happened and it flipped and then, spoiler alert, obviously, but, you know, Hank ends up getting killed That's and Jesse ends Hank up getting captured. Here. Then I flipped again and I'm like, oh, yo, fucking Je- don't hurt Jesse. <laughs> so, like, I go back and forth so much. It, I think... You know what it is? The concept of the anti-hero, which is what this is, like the idea of this guy who's like a, the leading character but super complex and shit. Like, mm-hmm. I like that. I like the idea of having a, a leading a- a character who's not like, like, you know how like if you watch a Steven Seagal movie or some shit, you see him like, you know, I'm fucking up some bad guys and then I'm gonna like go Just make out with the hottest girl yeah. and like, n- no, like I don't like, that's too simplistic and too dull and like it doesn't keep me interested. Whereas Breaking Bad was mm-hmm. like, no, we're gonna take you for a fucking ride, bitch, buckle up. That's why the like the difference between Hank and Rick is Rick doesn't have too much of a backstory. He's getting a little bit more interesting now that he You mean Walt and that, Rick? Um, you mean Walt or Hank? Uh Walt. Sorry. Okay, yeah. So um, go Walt ahead. has a backstory and you know he's 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 fighting with his wife and like he was a teacher. Rick, there's that little storyline of that he admitted that the kid wasn't his, you know, right. and he's like coped with that. So it's like that's a little bit more intriguing. Uh-huh. But there's so much more stuff going on with Walt that makes you more or like, you know, interested in what's going on with his story because there's so many other storylines just tied to him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, it does. <laughs> um I'm I I you know, you said something about Walking Dead that kind of has been weighing on me. Like I do think there's way too much filler shit. Like, now I'm noticing with Negan, and somebody else was making this point mm-hmm. on Twitter who I follow and I like, and he was like, look, man, Negan's a one-dimensional, like, character, and they're kind of it's kind of grown tired with uh, with what he's been doing. Like, he, mm-hmm. every episode is just, they're kind of, like, building him up as this character, like this cold, fucking dark character who's, like, you know, kind of seemingly like a, above even giving a shit about the fact that he's being so immoral and he's like smug and it's like okay, yeah, we got it, we got that all, went from the first episode. Now what? <laughs> like, give me something yeah. else. So it's like, yeah. but to this point, where I think where I disagree with you and some other people on The Walking Dead is, I think to this point, it's been nearly flawless. There's been some too many fillers at points early on, but fewer that I had real issue with. But now I'm starting to see like the last episode. I mean, I guess. You know what it is? Maybe it's the introduction of those new weird characters that, like, all female fucking enclave that it takes a while when a new character gets on to really give them a chance and to, like, understand why they're in the plot and shit. It, well, yeah, exactly. But I don't know. I feel with Breaking Bad, it was just one continuous storyline. Like, everyone was connected somehow, whereas Walking Dead, it's like, Disparate. there's this new group of people Disparate, who aren't yeah. even really connected to, like, you know... They'll tie him in like, eventually, but I hear you. I'm with you. Because it, you can't just introduce them and expect me to care in the way that you exactly. introduced them. Like, like I was so interested in the Morgan storyline because it's like season one. Yeah, 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 yeah. With Rick. Yeah. So when they found him again, I was like, oh, shit, this is the dude from season one. Yeah. Whereas like now there was those people who who when uh, the, the girls washed the shore on the beach. Right. And she found like those people and it was like that Hawaiian girl or whatever. Yep. I was like, OK, they have no that like. Yeah, not yeah. that I know of right now, but they have no connection to anything. Yeah. So, like, fuck them. And you went from, like, a crazy episode to that, and you're like, now I have to care about new people? Like, don't give me new people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I hear I you. Just, I, I but, just like the Breaking Bad. But Game of Bad. Thrones, I'm curious how I feel about Game of Thrones, because I'm, I'm for, for everybody who doesn't know, and I'm sure most of my listeners know at this point, I'm like a low-key idiot with shit that's not politics. Like, I'm just a moron. <laughs> and so if, if you give me a bunch of characters in a show, and that's what they say about Game of Thrones, there's too many characters, I'll just be like, well, what's happening? Fly mm-hmm. on the wall. Like, I'll just start Are looking. You, is that your next one? I'm going to do Game of Thrones next, yeah. And hopefully I'll catch up and I'll get to the point where I could watch with everybody live. Like, everybody, it's still on, right? It doesn't, a few oh, more seasons gone? left. Yeah, I think there's a few more. You never watched uh, Game of Thrones? Or you watched a few never and then you stopped? Game of Thrones, no. Yeah, there's a, people keep recommending shit. Okay, Sons of Anarchy is another one people have been Sons recommending. Yeah, we try. 
yeah so i'll give them i'll give them all a shot but i mean i really binge watched uh breaking bad like from when i started to when i was done it was only maybe two weeks maybe three weeks and it was just so like the details um from what i can remember because it was a while ago when i watched it but i think it was um when he went to was it new hampshire or vermont yes, or new something hampshire like that? new hampshire yeah and like their license plate was like live free or die yeah and he had that chance when he was in that little like bungalow to really to live free you know and it's probably not the life he wants to live but he can go to that little bar or whenever um, yeah. Or die, and he left and died, and it was just like the the license plate details combining yeah, no, with the storyline, just like mind blowing. Yeah, another point that somebody made to me that I thought was just fucking spot on is wh- the way he died at the end. How he went into he was in a meth lab and he died. It, it it that he died there because that's where he felt most alive. Like that's what he said to his wife at one point. Damn. He was like, he told his wife. Like, you have to understand that I'm doing this all, and she cut him off, and she's like, don't you dare say for the family again. And he was like, for myself. Yeah. I really, I I like it. I felt, I felt alive. And then he ended up dying in, in the meth lab. It's fucking crazy, man. And, and some know, people say he might not be dead, but who knows? No, he's dead. He's dead. They're not. Well, yeah, he's definitely dead. They think they're going to, no, you can't, you can't take something that's so perfect and then twist it now. Yeah. Yeah, to like if you bring it back, what are you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna fuck it up. There's no way you could make it as good, because that that character it's exhausted now. Like you did the whole curve of the character, you would have to have the best writers ever to revive it and make it as even equally as good as it is now. Yeah, it's like fucking up the Mona Lisa series. He just like pops up from the ground. Yeah, (laughs) it's like like, it's like walking up to the Mona Lisa and like drawing a mustache on her and going like, no, I'm just I'm just improving it. I'm just trying to. Mona Lisa's trans now, and we're just making a trans Mona Lisa. It's good. <laughs> I'm just improving it. Mustaches yeah. are in. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I had uh, screen recorder issues for our last podcast. People still listen and stuff, and I still uploaded it. But yeah, I was getting clown, dude. You were? Yeah, because it sounded like I was under like 20 barrels of water. Yeah, no, to- <laughs> it, it's not. It, it's so, okay, here's the thing. First of all, I did a, a talk with a guy named Michael Tracy, a journalist. And I used uh-huh. I was using that same screen recorder because that's the screen recorder I've been using, and mm-hmm. so I same thing happened with his. His was the first one where I noticed there was an issue, and so I was like, "Fuck! All right, there's. Let me try to improve this. There's really nothing I could do to make it sound good." So I was like, "I guess I just. It's either don't put it up or put it up like that." I said, "Well, look, if I was in my audience, I would want to hear it either way, even if it's shitty audio. Let me do it." So I just threw it up there. Mm-hmm. Then we did this. I did the the Kyle and Corn with you and. I listened to it after. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong? So there's, so first of all, for everybody who doesn't know, the Michael Tracy talk and the Kyle and Corn, the last Kyle and Corn, it was video recorded, but it didn't actually video record. Like it was supposed to be video recording, but it mm-hmm. didn't video record. So that was gone. So then I was like, okay, this is just audio. That sucks. Uh, and then the your it was always my audio was fine, but the other person's audio was shitty. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh motherfucker. So anyway. I figured out that there was... So I had updated my Skype because it just kept hitting me with update, 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 update thing. And finally, I was like, oh, fuck you. And I updated it. So I was like, I don't want to see that thing anymore. So I updated mm-hmm. it. And then come to find out, this the screen recorder program I use, it obviously didn't sync with the update. It was still re- oh, okay. ready for the old Skype thing. So mm-hmm. then my buddy, who's like a genius at this stuff, was like, okay, I'll, I'll go search and see if I could find the update see if i could find like a patch patch thing for it he's like nope it's not out yet and i was like okay well really so what everybody who has this this thing is called super tintin the name of the program so everybody that has this it it sucks for them he was like nah man it's just people who have it like illegally and i was like oh fuck that's right mine is mine was technically illegal because um i i had it on my old laptop and then that laptop sh- shit the bed and then when i got my new laptop my buddy was like, hey, I could just get it for you. Like, you don't need to pay, you know, whatever it is. It's not even expensive. It was like 25 bucks or 30 bucks or some shit. He's like, I could just get yeah. it for you because I know how to get it. I was like, okay, just get it. So it, I had gotten it illegally and then he had patched it on and it wasn't my email address and yada, 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 all, the, all this shit. So anyway, mm-hmm. so that one was done. And this is a really long way of me describing, again, to go back to the theme of how big of an idiot I am. So like <laughs> yesterday, I'm like, Oh God, what am I going to do? So I'm going to, I wanted to do the Kyle and Corn with you today. I needed this, obviously a screen recorder program at some point. I, I need to have it. So I started doing research. 
all right, what do I do? Can I un- uninstall this and then reinstall it and pay for it? Or would that be okay? But then my buddy was like, well, there's no guarantee they actually did patchwork for it to make it better. So you're taking a risk. And then I was like, okay, well, should I use my PC? I'm- I've been used to using my PC for this. Should I use my Mac? So right now I'm on my Mac. This is a new program mm-hmm. for my Mac. Um, and I had tried, like, when I was setting it up, it hit me with, you ready for this, Corey? This is some shit that you'll relate to 100%. It hit me with, as I'm going through the steps, it popped up with username, and it said, said my name, Kyle Kalinske, and then it had password. I just, so I just came across that problem. So when that came up, I was like, what do you mean? Like, you didn't, I didn't put in a username and a password yet. They just hit mm-hmm. me with username and password. And, and I, so it's on my Mac, but it didn't look like the shit that would be like, oh, put in your Apple password. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it was yeah. connected to the program I just uploaded and, it, uploaded and it wasn't, or installed, and it wasn't just, it didn't look like the Mac thing. So I was like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? <laughs> so yeah. anyway, I'm sitting there for fucking 15 minutes, 20 minutes, putting in different things. It ain't fucking working. And I was ready to give up, man. I was ready to pull my fucking hair out and say, fuck this. I'm, you know, like, I'm just going to try to use. See, I could have used the QuickTime, the standard thing that came on my Mac, but I'm a little weary with it. And I think when it records, it only records in the way with, like, your face big on the screen and me little in the corner. I couldn't change the settings to set it equal. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. people won't like that. And that's a little weird and yada, yada, yada. So, but I was, I really just say, fuck it. I'm going to give up and just find some other random ass way to do it or whatever. But then at the mm-hmm. last minute, I, I tried, I had already tried my Mac password, my Apple password, and I guess I didn't do the case sensitive shit. So I tried oh. a case sensitive and it worked and I was like, <sighs> but so anyway, the whole ordeal was like fucking two hours yesterday of me trying to figure out, all right, what program do I use? I was watching YouTube videos trying to find out what program is easy and intuitive because I hate it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to have some shit that's hard to do because I'm an idiot and I don't care about like, I just want to be able to fucking click a button, record it, and then give it to everybody. But, like, it's all it's always some shit. There's too like, many ways to do shit now. I know. Like, you got to tweak this, and you could do that, and you could change this. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't want to change anything. Just give me some shit that I could record it. So, anyway, mm-hmm. it took dumb long, and then when I was finally done, I was like, uh... <laughs> and I took a deep breath. So, you just ran into that issue with Skype right now, or no? Well, I ran into that issue with... So, I'm on... A, I have, like, two Macs. So, the other one I used, when I was trying to download Skype, it was, like, Administrator. And it told me, and I was like, like I didn't even get to the point where you were at. I was just like, I have no fucking idea what this password is. <laughs> so I just closed it and went to the other computer and just prayed that that one didn't ask me for a password, and I was good. Yeah. But I always get the message in the top right. It's like, do you want to inst- like re- install this program, and you could restart your computer. And I always hit it with like the try tonight button. And I just always push that button and like never update my computer. And the the feeling that I get when like when I recorded our thing and then at the end of it, I listened to it and it wasn't on point. The f- that feeling for like that 15 second, 30 second, like right when I learned like, you know, you don't fucked up, right? You know, you don't fucked up, don't you? I'm like, yo, but oh. mad respect to like everyone who listened to it. Like I, I oh yeah no 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 right now you go look at the numbers for that one and those are the mm-hmm. real secular talk fans real. mad mad respect and I, I was thinking like what is that comparable to and I was thinking like when I go on road trips and you know when you like start hitting the borderline of when your like awesome radio station from home starts fizzling out a little bit yep but they're still playing like an OD banger yep <laughs> you're like I'm gonna I'm gonna let this rock for as long as I can before I'm like before ah, you can't this. do it it's too static yeah. I got to I got to hit the yeah. seek button. But you're hanging on where most normal people would have been like I'm tapping out. I'm tapping out. For dear life, like if it's some like if they're hitting me on like a I usually take my road trips on like a Friday night or something so like you get hot 97 playing like some reggae hour and it'll be like bangers the whole time. You'll start getting a jersey, you'll be fizzling out. You're, you're like uh, I'm, I'm sticking, sticking with it. <laughs> I'll stay with you a little bit more. And then it gets real fuzzy and like some country and some yeah. weird like information <laughs> stuff coming in. And you're like Nah, I really, Yo, like, I gave you all that I could. So I'm really curious how long country. people stayed and listened to our fucking podcast. Yeah, I'm, it's always country, isn't it? Like when you're trying, like when you're, when it peaks in. And I'm like, I'm just in Jersey. It's like, we didn't, we didn't like go to. <laughs> We're not in Iowa, like, bitch. It's Jersey. <laughs> Why are you giving me country? And like, it's the fucking fallback shit. Nah, man, that was, that's a good point. Because that is what people were going through. Like they're listening to it. It's like, uh, I, I don't know. 
I mean, I'll hang on, but God damn it, guys. But yeah, no, like my feeling was like, fuck, like, why did this happen? Because well, cause it's not because mm-hmm. in my mind, I'm thinking these people aren't asking for that much. They want to see me and Corin talk about some shit and they just want the audio to be decent and they want to see like a screen. Like, even if it's yeah. fucking 360p, whatever the fuck, they would just, okay, at least I could you- see you talking. And even then, it's like because of the little fuck ups behind the scenes, it's like the universe was like, no, wrong. Wrong. They did a Trump. Wrong. 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 You're going to hear Corin underwater with static, fucking like Darth Vader, and you're going to hear me fine, and it's just going to be bad. My my wife listens, and she was like, it sounded a little funky on your end. I was like, damn, if you're saying that shit, Some, like, no, somebody, you probably could have lied to me at first. No, somebody somebody was telling me, just I think just being nice, like, no, it's, it's good. I was like, don't stop. He's like, no, no, it's fine. I don't know. There's no problem. <laughs> like, there's a problem. I know there's a problem. But until today, we were like all the times we've recorded. I've like I've never once said you've never once said like, yo, let's do like a, a two minute test and upload it. Yeah. We just like straight shoot into like an hour and a half of talking. And then at the end, and then after I'm like, yeah, one didn't work. <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> no, dude, people- we've killed it for like an hour and a half. And then like the whole shit, you're like. You'll text me like 20 minutes later. And I always know if I get a text from you like 10 minutes or 20 minutes later, before I open it, I'm like, we don't fucked up. <laughs> oh, that's so true. Yeah, no, that, that happened. Like, people don't know. There's like, you know how Chappelle show, like when Chappelle show went off the air, there was like the lost season. There were like a few episodes from the next season that they like threw out there yeah. on a the DVD or some shit. They're the lost episodes of Kyle and Corin that me and you did, but that like weren't recorded or is fucked up at some point. People, there's some bangers. <laughs> this shits are worth like a mil- millions of dollars at this point. Like the ones that nobody will ever hear, but they're out there, but they're not really out there. Like it's just like a fucking yep. phantom, awesome fucking podcast that I fucked up. But that's but we're I mean, so dumb. Like anything people do in film or TV, like they take mad takes because like nothing's perfect. Yeah, no, but, but it's not even that close. It's just technical. Like, it's it was good. all technical shit. Like we always yeah, when we talk, true. we just talk and it works. But like it's all fucking on my end with the technical shit that. I'm trying. It's like I'm always trying to piece shit together at the last minute. But look, this one that we're doing right now, like I know that. So I know it's recording. I know it's got both of our video and both of our audio. But like, I maybe some shit will still fuck up. <laughs> like, there's always that chance of like, oh no, it stopped recording at like 16 and a half minutes in because you didn't set away the default settings from the 16 and a half minute max. And it's like that shit, like. Like, when you were with me, remember when you were back here for Thanksgiving and then we did the thing? It's like, oh, the sound recorder for, uh, the, the like, the card on the sound recorder tapped out at, like, an hour and 30 minutes or some shit. And it was like, yep. oh, yeah, oops. <laughs> so, the last, like, yep. 15 minutes of our conversation were just cut off. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? But, I mean, shit like that happens, man. We don't have the whole, so like... You can't a, even fucking predict. I know. We don't have, like, a giant staff, so it's not like, you know... Like, oh, we'll send that to the fucking tech specialist and they'll fix it. Like, there's, it's just me and I'm an idiot and I don't know anything and <laughs> we just talk. That's what it is. Yo, it's snowing here right now. It's fucking blazing in Chicago right now. Not hot. I, blazing was the absolute worst <laughs> term to use. It's snowing too. It's here. snowing there too? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I kind of hate it. But, but New York, here's the thing. So I'm a New York driver just by blood. You're a New York driver. We know how to drive in the snow. In Chicago, they don't. And really? And they go slow, and it messes every... Yeah, it's weird. That, but they, they get more snow than us, no? Don't they get more snow in Chicago, or no? I don't know if they get more snow. It just gets colder. But oh, okay. But rain, snow, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know if we just have better drivers in New York. No, it's... A, but we're... they don't know how to drive in bad weather here. New Yorkers, people say about New Yorkers, and it's probably true to an extent, but like we, we're like fast with everything. Like we, mm-hmm. like when we go through some shit, we're going through some shit. Like we're just, okay, like we got to do A, B, and C. Let's do A, B, and C, and let's move along here. Like you, you know, walking in the city, like you walk in the city, you're just, yeah, like boom, frogger, boom, boom. You're yeah, walk, yeah, walking yeah. right by people, and it's not paying attention, nothing. If you're walking in the Midwest or some shit in some town, people be like, hey, well, how you doing? <laughs> And we're like, yeah, I don't know you. you. What you'll are you? Stop. You'll talk. Yeah. What are you? Stop. I, what are you doing? So it's just a different. It's like a different vibe. But I mean, you've been there long enough now to pick up on the Chicago vibe. Like you know, like do you hear? Yeah, the, I mean, do you hear the accent or no? When people say like Chicago and um, some people I do hear it a little bit, but uh, not really. I just don't give a shit. Like I sort of just <laughs> like don't like if we're talking about something. 
and unless it's really, really like blatant, like people will say to me sometimes, like, I don't hear your New York accent, or someone will be like, oh yeah, would say that word again, and I'm just like, it's like I'm just talking, like yeah, like, no, it's but it's, I don't I hear it a little bit. New York accent. So I asked people. I once like did a Twitter poll or some shit. Like, do I have a New York accent? And most people said no. And because I don't know, like when they say New York accent, are they talking like, I think in the minds of many people, when they hear New York, they might think like a Staten Island accent. Like I'm going to get some coffee and, you know, like go to the car and get some coffee. You want some coffee? It's, and I don't even, I mean, I've been around tons of New York people and maybe just because I, that, that's what I listen for. Yeah. Like we spoke about this last episode. If I go to Boston, I can I can hear Boston the act, car, yeah, in the car. Say certain words. Yeah. In New York, maybe just because I've lived there, I don't I don't hear an accent with people. Even when they say like bagel or coffee, I'm just like, well, he's just talking. Yeah, no, but I don't know if that's because we're biased or if that's because the yeah. areas we live in New York are areas where the New York accent isn't very pronounced. You know what I mean? Like we're yeah. like we're both we were both. It, we're ju- we're just outside of the city. We weren't in the city. We weren't in like Staten Island, where well, it's were, really pronounced. Were your parents raised in the city? My mom was in the Bronx, so, yeah, so may- I mean, I, yeah, maybe parents, she could have had a little bit of something. But mm-hmm. um, my dad was uh, was in Westchester County, so no, he wouldn't have okay. shit. Um, but yeah, no, I'm in the same boat as you. I don't hear it much. But then again, my dad once told me a story. Now, you you knew my dad. You knew if you he talked, you wouldn't have thought like, oh, New York accent or anything. But he said he mm-hmm. when he went like hunting one time and he was in like, I don't know if it was like Mississippi. Oh, Alabama. I think he was in Alabama. And when he got off the plane, he just like said hi to whoever was there or whatever. And they were like, you're from New York, aren't you? And he was yeah, like. Yeah, well, it, I was yeah. just going to say that if you go somewhere like, I don't even like an Oregon or like. Seattle, Washington, and like you're from New York, just like a swagger alone. Well, that's what I was gonna like say. You're... Probably the way we carry ourselves is a little different. I don't know, exactly. but I don't even know. Like, what are all? I don't know all the stereotypes of New Yorkers. I know loud is one, arrogant is another. Like, you know, busy and ne- not nice. Like, mean. We're supposed to be mean. You know, there's nothing positive. Is there anything yeah. positive? Mm, not that I know of. <laughs> like, anything, like, like we give good blowjobs or anything like that. Like anything, like just like positive, like upbeat. Um, no, I think we're mostly viewed as like Trump. Like New York is viewed as like Trump. Like we're Trump. We're fucking like asshole, just business, like, mean, yeah. businessy kind of greedy fucks, basically. But I don't know. I, I've liked people in New York. <laughs> I mean, I'm biased because I live here and I'm a lifelong New Yorker. But I don't know. Um, but it's partially true. I mean, a lot of the people we know are just, you know, go-getters, whereas the people I know from California, and maybe this is just because I have that stereotype, is they're pretty laid back and just pretty yeah. just mellow, go with the flow, like, what's up, dude? Like, yeah, I don't and know. I got that vibe when I went to California, too. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't, yeah, I'm sure there's something to that, like the cultural differences on the coasts versus... Mm-hmm. But yeah, there. I mean, I guess maybe because we're so close, to like Manhattan, like the Go Getter Central, you know, like. <laughs> but unfortunately, so many people, like on Wall Street, they're just fucking pricks who are just trying to game the system and like get rich, in that kind of way. Speaking of like yeah. Go Getters, I just so I was just talking to, the guy, uh, my contractor guy, and mm-hmm. he was telling me how, again, because he does work back at the place where I grew up and like the the townhouses I grew up. Um, he was saying how this was amazing. I couldn't believe it when he was telling me the story. I was like, no, no. I already couldn't believe it. Remember the thing we spoke about last week, P. Diddy's uh, baby mama in one of the houses? Yeah. Foreclosure mm-hmm. and shit. So apparently in a different house, there was a, there was a giant drug bust in Brookridge. In your old oh, complex? I fucking said it. I just said it. People know where I grew up now. <laughs> there you go. So, the people don't don't go, go like the torture go the people person? who live in Brookridge. Okay, I grew up there, but I'm not there anymore, so don't do it. <laughs> but yeah, so in there, that's where I grew and up. You need and a code to get in. In, in what you do need a code to get in, but I mean, like the it, you just get out and walk around it. But, oh, I'm giving people advice. <laughs> it's getting worse and worse. So anyway, the number of the place I grew up in is. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna tell that one. Um, but uh, well, I, you know what? People could have looked it up like, anyway when I said. You're- when I said the the uh, P Diddy's baby mama thing, they could have looked it up. I think that was public records, like what she, where she lived because of the foreclosure. But anyway, so there was a drug. People know where like people know where Tiger Woods and everybody lives. No, I don't think so. I think it's somewhat hidden, right? 
No. You can't be I mean, that like, fucking famous and have everybody know where you live. What do you mean? Go to Hollywood and go on like a Hollywood tour. They take you around. I mean, you could find out where Richard Simmons lives. Yeah, nobody gives a fuck about Richard Simmons. Like people give a fuck about Tiger Woods and Mike, like Michael Jordan. Like you think people know where Michael Jordan lives? Like oh, it's just I know where his old house was in Chicago. But his his shit he's living in now. People definitely know. People definitely know where he lives. Michael Jordan. A hundred percent. If really? you Google like Michael Jordan's new house, you could probably find it. Well, you could see the pictures of it, but not the literal address. Right. A hundred percent, you could find the address. No, of, like, any I would be amazed. Houses. No, I'd be amazed if you could find the address, dude. A lot of those people when they travel, they travel under aliases because they yeah, because, that they do because they don't want people coming to their hotel and shit. But at their yeah, house, they don't want they people coming to their fucking address shit. in their house either. Obviously. I'm I don't telling know. I you. I think people know where celebrities no, live. I'm, okay, here's my guess. My guess is with the overwhelming majority of celebrities, there mm-hmm. might be like, oh, like a random article of this is what their house is, like the MTV Cribs where you could see what it looks like and shit, basically. Mm-hmm. But they're not posting there like, oh, it's 372 Smith Lane, fucking Washington State, yada, yada. Like, no, they wouldn't do that. Because no, I mean, you're going to worry about fucking security and shit. You don't want people coming to your shit. No, but like um, I watch the Wahlburgers and mm-hmm. Donnie Wahlberg all the time is like he lives in Illinois. He's like in a suburb. Um, I don't know the town just because I can't think of it. But he always says the town and they show footage. So it's like, yeah, but the town is one I thing. The huge, address is another. The exact address. If it's like a yeah, the exact address. But I'm sure if you did a little digging, you can find where he lives in that town. Like if I was a huge like New Kids on the Block fan, I would be surprised. <laughs> like like so I so we know for example the Clintons live in Chappaqua. Like the, mm-hmm. the Clintons, but we don't know their exact address because, well, I guess he's the former fucking president, so maybe it's a little different. But like for super, super A plus plus list celebrities, like they, I would want my shit hidden, 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 hidden. I don't know, dude. I think you could find the Clinton shit too. <laughs> you think so? I don't know. A hundred percent. Okay, I don't know. I'm I'm curious. I'll research this at some point. But anyway, so yeah. the story I was gonna tell is in the place where I grew up. There was mm-hmm. a giant fucking drug bust recently. Apparently, there was this fucking drug kingpin who was living in one of the houses. And He's like, yes, he living in one of the houses. And it, that's I think, pretty awesome. And Nur- the Nourishell cops didn't take him down. The DEA took him down. It was a federal case. So there were the DEA went in there. They called it Operation Green Venom or some shit. And this guy, uh, this guy was like. So one article said he was just like a giant, like a, the supplier for weed for all of New York and all of fucking, um, and all of New Jersey. One article Damn. said that. Another article said it was weed and coke. But um, here are the two craziest facts. One is J- Jay-Z's former business partner was arrested in the raid in the house with him, which is fucking crazy. And what? Wait, it gets even crazier. The guy had ordered 20 uh, murders. So he had ordered like 20 hits on people. Who is this guy? Like, just like. I, oh, his name like... was. I was just I was just reading about it. Um, and this was in your old complex. Like, yes. Yes. Did you. Was he new? Did you do you remember? No. Him? OK. So like... apparently he got busted in like 2010. But what happened is, which was I was gone by then. Um, mm-hmm. But what happened is. They broke down the door early in the morning, went in there. Everything went smoothly. There was no, like, gun fucking fight or anything. So they broke down the door, took him into custody, and it wasn't reported on until, like, like a year or two later. So, and there was, like, a big federal case over it, but it, in 2010 is when he was busted. So I, I, had, I was already out. But, I mean, I guess they were, like, he was living there even when I was there at one point. That's nuts. I know. It's, it's fucking crazy. Nuts. That's, like, on some Breaking Bad thing. Like, you don't... It's just like in a nice neighborhood, you know, you don't know what, like, that's why I get scared. Just like I can fight, but every time I go to a bar or just out and I like have like a, not, I, I don't have confrontations with people, but if I get into an argument, I'm like, this dude could be like the world's best UFC fighter or some <laughs> shit. Like, I don't know like who he is. <laughs> like, and like you, you just go out to like grab your newspaper or some shit. And the dude next to you just looks like a regular ass dude. And you're like, Hey, what's up, Bill? How are you? He's like, good, man. He yeah. goes back in his house and he like ordering hits on people. Yeah, no, it is. It's weird, isn't it? That's so weird. You just don't know about people. Like, like everyone's a human being and they're all doing some weird shit. It's just how weird of shit are you doing? Yeah, 
Yeah, no, it's crazy to think about that. Like right near where where I grew up, there was just <laughs> a fucking drug kingpin just chilling. <laughs> So, but no, everybody there was, was a, like, there yeah. was a news story in um, Scarsdale of like a, just a random, like Scarsdale mom was like 45 years old. Very similar thing. She did horseback riding, all this like fancy shit, but she was just like a huge drug dealer and they like busted her and she went to jail for like 30 years or something. Yeah. I like, you know me, man. I like the thing that really shook me was like, oh, he ordered murders. <laughs> like, that's not okay. I don't give a shit. If he was just selling weed, I'd be like, whatever. But he's selling weed. And, oh, and he ordered 20 hits. Like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't like that. That's fucking crazy. That's crazy. And oh, you know what it made me think of? It made me think of in Breaking Bad when uh, Gustavo said to, to Walt, he's like, I hide in plain sight. That's the guy who who owned the fish place, uh, not the fish place, the chicken place. Chicken spot. Yeah, the chicken shot. El Pollo Loco. He owned that. And yeah. um, he like he would go to like DEA events and like talk to the guys and say, and give them like free food and shit. And he was like, I hide yeah, in plain he sight. Went, like they don't even know the, it, um, it's me. Exactly. Yeah. He went to the office and like he put $20 in the Walter White thing. You remember? Yeah. So that's like, so if you're living in like an area where it's like townhouses and they're, and they're close to each other, like, they're connected, all the townhouses in there. So, like, mm-hmm. that actually, if you think about it, that's, like, the perfect place for a drug kingpin to live because it's, like, they're, like, what do you mean? How could I be a fucking drug kingpin? I My neighbors are right on my wall. Like, what are you saying? How could I hide anything? My neighbors are right there, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. it's fucking crazy. Um, well, you, we used to play cards at an American Legion, so, like, oh, all yeah. the cops are probably just, like, oh, no, they're all veterans in there and they're doing fine. No, motherfucker. There's a big gambling like ring no. going on inside. I of think it. we should we tell our uh, okay people people who are new to the show. Probably most people listening right now have never heard our uh, our story about cards, our craziest story about cards. So we've got a lot of them. Yes, we do. But so me and Corin, um, I mean, I, I, we I feel <clears throat> weird calling us degenerates because we we were just like kids doing our thing. Like it didn't feel no, like I'm a we, degenerate. Do you think so? Like I don't know. I feel like that's being too harsh on us, but. So we played cards when we were in high school. We that's when like Texas Hold'em blew up right at the right time for us because it got mm-hmm. popular in 2003 with Chris Moneymaker when he won the World Series of Poker. And like what happened was I think hockey was on strike or something. So ESPN or ESPN two or some shit had to put something on its place, and they were just like, I don't know, put the World Series of Poker and see if it works. So they did. So how old were we? So 88, 98, 99, 2001. Yeah, so we were, we were 15, like 15 years old when it hit. When the poker craze mm-hmm. really hit. So we got into it. And when we were in high school, we were like, okay, well, let's try to like play anywhere we can. So we'd play in our buddies' basements and shit. And my basement, we used to have tournaments in my basement. And I don't even, do you even remember how we first got into a legit poker club? Um, The first time, it must have been. The older Vinny kids? probably got us in there. Who did? Vinny must have known about it because I feel like it might have tagged us along. I feel like it may have been like one of the older kids. Oh, okay, yeah, and said yeah, like, "Hey, I'm who I, like we're like I okay, yeah, like you can come." Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, we ended up in the first time in this in in a poker club. We used to go to one in Nurshell, and we used to go to one in in Yonkers, and mm-hmm. <clears> and sometimes in the city. I remember going oh, to the my city first one. time at the PlayStation one. I lost big the the one the one in the city when we went to. First of all. We've I've told the story before on air. I think in the first Kyle and Corn, where we went to the city, I had remember when I ran out of I was like running out of gas on the way back. I'm like, yo, I might die on the West Side Highway where there's nowhere to pull over. It was the Your scariest. Gas had been on E for like four weeks. And <laughs> <laughs> that's the classic Kyle move for everybody listening. I was literally born with my tank on E. Like I've never driven with my tank not on E. So, no, when I got in the car and you like just said it mad nonchalant. Like, like yeah. I think the gas light was on before we went to New York City. You're like, <laughs> so nah, I'm good to get there. Man. We drove to <laughs> We drove to the city and then I and then I forgot my wallet. We had to drive back, get my wallet, and then go back to the city. And then on the way back from there, it was like I felt the gas giving. Like I'm pressing on the West Side Highway and it was like, oh no. So yeah. I don't even know how we got out of that. We pulled off. You had to lend me money because I had blown it all at the poker club because I went there and lost in 32 seconds. Do you remember if you won or lost that day? Uh, I probably lost, but I remember it, it got like raided a week later. 
So thank God for that because he probably would have lost more. So, okay. So anyway, so that was the one in the city where I, we drove there. I had to drive back home to get my wallet, drive back to the city, and then almost ran out of gas on the way home, but we got it, saved it at the last second. But um, the one in Nourishell, uh I won't say any names, but it was run by this big guy who... Uh, we now me and you didn't know, and no, none of us knew. Hey, is this person like mafioso or like fake mafioso? In fact, mm-hmm. I leaned into thinking that's like they're like fake mafia. They're not real like mafia dudes. Yeah, yeah. So then, but anyway, like so years after we had stopped going to this club, a story comes on uh, TV about how the dude who ran the club got his hand cut off, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. Yeah, supposedly he owed mad money to some like dude in Florida, and the dude like came up and they cut his hand off right, chopped in, his hand off right in front of the club that me and you were at all the time, mm-hmm. all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. That's fucking nuts, son. I was like, oh, so maybe this is like real mafia shit, and I'm an idiot for being involved. And then one time when we went to the one, went to the one in Urshel, but it was closed that day. But then somebody else drove up who was a regular, a much older guy who was like. Oh, you guys want to go to the city? They're doing the one in the city tonight. We could take you to the city tonight. And so we're like, all right. They're like, yeah, I'll drive you there, and then we'll drive you back here after. We were like, all right. And then we hop in, and then it was the scariest drive of my life because the dude was going like fucking 80 miles, miles an hour in like hour. a 40-mile-an-hour zone. I'm like, what is happening right now? What is happening? And then they introduced us to the one in Connecticut, and that was a whole other one. Oh, the one in Connecticut. You have quite a story about the last time you were there. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, you want to like tell that one or no? Just what? You want to tell that one or no? I, mean, I don't want to go into detail, but long story short, <laughs> he murdered got, somebody. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I got long story short, I got murdered. <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't a good night. Let's put it that way. It wasn't a good night. Yeah, it, we we always seem to show up at the wrong times. And then that's yeah. not even getting into like the like the bad beats that we had at times. Yeah. Oh. Like I had actually won like some tournaments, but whenever it was a cash game, I always seemed to get my fucking ass handed to me. There were there was a time I had like a full house and somebody else had four of a kind or some shit or had like a higher full house and I was in shock and I had lost like a fucking thousand dollars in a pot. Meanwhile, I'm like a high school kid and I'm like, what just happened? I had a thousand dollars right here and I just lost it. Yep. Yeah. Those would be the best feelings ever. It was like staying till the morning, going to high school, like That's literally that morning say. with all that money in your pocket. Do you remember that? I remember, I think I remember only one time where we really did, like we stayed out the entire night and then went to high school the next morning. Like we were there and then it was just too late. And I was like, I can't fucking go in now at like whatever it was, four o'clock in the morning. Like it's just too obvious. It also didn't help that one of our friends literally had a poker table in his house around our high, like at our high school, basically. Like, yeah, no, that <laughs> that that didn't help our cause. No, I <laughs> I really enjoyed those tournaments, though. Like, I really, I wish I could still yeah, do it where, it where we have a weekly tournament. Wouldn't you like that if it was yeah. like a weekly tournament nowadays? I just enjoy anything that is like routine and weekly because it's like something you can look forward to, like basketball games on Wednesday or so, like tournaments for on the weekend. No, it's you're right. It's good doing anything. Like, no, you're so right. What I would give to have like a weekly, a few weekly things would be so great. If I had a weekly tea time to play golf That'd somewhere, nice. I'd fucking mm-hmm. love that. If I um, if I had a weekly mm-hmm. poker game, that'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, we, I mean. How, but how many people really do that? I feel like that's something where a lot of people want to do, but nobody does it. Like, nobody really yeah, does the weekly thing. Try. Yeah, because people get busy with jobs and shit and with life. And, like, kids, nobody yeah. has time for anything. Like, I really don't have time for shit. You know? Like, it's just I talk, talk, talk during the week. And then I, you know, I do other work that goes along with the talking. But now, thankfully, I got an editor to take some of that off my shoulders. But that's it. Like, <laughs> And then whenever I'm actually off, like... This was actually one of the things I wanted to talk about. So people get angry at the idea of a staycation. You heard about this? Like, mm-hmm. oh, it's a vacation, but uh, you just kind of hang out at your house because you don't have the money to go away. Like, mm-hmm. I would, I think I ch- would choose a staycation over a vacation because a vacation of like, oh, I'm, I'm going to Aruba, I'm going to the Bahamas, I'm going here, I'm going there. It's like, okay, well, 
You got to, you have to organize everything. You have to get your ass on a fucking, you know, whatever, a ride to the, to the airport. And then you got to fly to the place. And then you got to get all your luggage and you got to unpack and you got to do this and you got to do that and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, you're never, so within the context of the vacation, I feel like 82% of it is kind of stressful and hectic. Like you do like get a logistical shit. Yeah, you do get a good like eighteen percent of like no, I'm just laying on the beach right now and I'm sipping a, 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 a mojito and it's just fucking awesome and I love it and I just want to lay on the beach and just let the breeze hit me and sleep. Like you get a good eighteen percent of that that's like really good rest and shit. But eighty two percent of it is like, ugh, I gotta do shit within my context of not doing shit in a vacation. You know, so like I you're love the idea. Right. It, but- the staycations are a good idea because, yes, you're right. Like, it's just 100% chill mode. You decide what you want to do. If you want to sleep the whole day, you don't have to talk to people, whatever. It depends on how long you're going on vacation for. Like, so I went to Florida for a quick weekend. Mm-hmm. Literally had to do the, like, wake up mad early, get on a flight, get to the airport, like, check in, do all this shit, talk to people, which I didn't want to do that early. And then when I got to my destination, like, the car rental line was dead ass like an hour and 15 minutes long and then when i finally got to my location i was so tired that i was just like i gotta take like a three hour nap so that was like the worst if it's just a quick trip but if i'm going somewhere for like 10 days i'll bite the bullet and do all that checking into the hotel bullshit because i'll have a bigger time to sleep on the beach or some shit that's interesting because i always felt like there's a sweet spot in a vacation where i I like it the most. So I think you're right. If it's like a day or two days or something, a little that's a little too quick because you're mm-hmm. just in and you're out and it's like, what was that even? I blinked and I did some shit and now we're back right back to square one. Um, but I'm not a fan of the long, long vacation, like the 10-day, 12-day shit, two weeks. Some, some oh, really? Like that. No, the sweet spot for me for vacation is I think three or four days. Three or four days. After four, I think I tap out. I think I go, you know what? I want to sleep in my own bed now. You know, it's interesting. I know my wife's that way. Uh, she she was just overseas. She was in like Czech Republic, then Paris. And like midway through her trip, she was just like, I've had enough of this. Like, I just want to be like in my bed. Yeah. Whereas me, I'm like, I, if I'm if I hit that cruise control and I'm like the third day and I still have three left, I'm like, I'm chilling. Like, yeah. I enjoy sleeping in a hotel. Yeah, but you've you're you've been you're g- pretty good with travel, and you, I don't even know if you know that you're good with travel. Like, remember when we went to North I like Carolina, travel. and I told you I was like, I don't even know how soon before, but I was like, Yo, you want to go to North Carolina? You were like, Fuck it, why not? <laughs> and so we just went to North Carolina for this weird like family thing, and it was just, I'm weird. I I like traveling. The only thing I don't do like doing is like staying at someone's house. Like if I'm in the same town, and you're, if it's like late at your crib, and you're like, you're just like sleep over fuck it and i'm like nah i just want to be like in my bed i don't have to like wake up and have to drive back to my house but if you're like yo let's take a road trip to wherever i'm like yeah i'm down yeah yeah and i'm better with driving than obviously i hate flying i'm scared of flying as everybody knows but driving doesn't bother me as much i mean we drove to north carolina i had driven to north carolina at a different time after me and you Mm -hmm. had driven to north carolina um i never did the florida drive i know you did the florida drive a few times right yeah, yeah, I'm comfortable with the Florida drive just because I'll like you break it up, you find restaurants to stop at and stuff like that. But when we went to North Carolina, it was before like I feel like Google Maps or some shit that really could or ways that could have hooked us up with some directions. Garmin, son. We had like your old school navigation yep. that like definitely wasn't updated from like no, yeah, <laughs> like the first one that came out ended up taking some like wherever anybody lives that long just central like main road. It's just called like Main Road. It has like everything yep. on it. Yep. Picture driving on that for what, eight like hours. Eight hours. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. No, we. So on the way down, we, what we did is me and you just hopped on 95 and we just went straight down on 95. Cruising. Just cruising. And, it, you know, it felt like it was going smooth as fuck because it was kind of empty and we were just flying. On the way back, mm-hmm. again, we just put it into the Garmin and just went. But it decided, fuck you, I'm going to dump you on like a Central Avi type place where like strip malls everywhere and lights everywhere. And we just took Mm -hmm. that shit the whole way. And it was stop. I think it was like 45 miles or 55 miles was maybe it maxed out. And it wasn't until maybe when we got to like home that we were like, uh, I think we just like drove all the way back (laughs) on one fucking main road. No, that's happened to me a bunch with that old ass Garmin. 
where like I've driven to some shit and it just obviously doesn't know what the fuck it's talking about. It's like, all right, do this. And then when when we were in Canada for your bachelor party, it didn't even work in Canada. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, bitch, you're a fucking GPS, like global positioning system global positioning Damn, system yo, i don't even know what that shit stood for that yeah. was gangster you knew that i think i think it's global positioning system imagine if i'm wrong i look like such an idiot right now but i'm pretty sure it is um no, it's a fucking satellite Sounds like okay right. so i went over this border and really you just crap out on me fuck off like know wh- where i'm going and it just didn't that tribe well, wasn't as bad a, as I, I thought it would be the no, uh, canada where we're at it's not terrible to like montreal yeah it was only like what six I think so, yeah. But it's like a it's smooth sailing the whole way. It's a smooth six. Whereas even I think I feel like Rochester was the same distance. Yeah, feel, Rochester's far. Uh, Rochester, uh-huh. yeah, but Rochester, if you look at a map, it's closer than Montreal. But or maybe but, just because you feel like, like no, you're but going it's the way Canada you take and, exactly. Like, it, it, when you go Canada, it's a straight shot north. When you go Rochester, it's like fucking. <laughs> yeah, all weird. Yeah, and I feel like that was equal time, even though our Rochester is technically much closer on the map. Then uh, I feel like there's so much shit that like you'll do for so long, and then someone will just come along and be like, you know, you could just fucking press, you know, this, and it or works. Do that yeah, totally. That you're explaining my and life like, right now. Fuck, man, my whole life I've been <laughs> like doing this. <laughs> like, uh, and then you just say it mad nonchalantly, like, yeah, you could just do this. <laughs> That's so true. I'm like, I've had that experience man, so many times. You. I'm doing some difficult shit, and they're just like, you know, that it's easier if you just do this, right? And it's like, oh wow, yeah. How did I not think of that? I'm learning Excel right now, and it's like I'll do everything oh, the long man. ass way. And with Excel, there's so many shortcuts. And no. Someone's just like, yo, just push Control like P. And they'll just get all your work done. I'm like, you motherfucker. No, Excel is like, I think the devil made Excel. I hate shit like that. For real. Like trying to like tedious, like organizational things. It's like, right, you need to sit down and focus and do, I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to organize anything. Why are you asking me to do it? (laughs) You know what annoys me? I was thinking about this the other day. Morning people. Do you know morning people? Like, do you know anybody who's a super morning person? Mm, not really, but I mean, I know that type of person. Yeah. I don't. What's up with that? Like, I'm, I'm the, the opposite. I'm nocturnal, basically, and like, I, I'm most mm-hmm. alive, like right before I go to sleep. Like, it's like the whole day is just a build up to the night when I'm most creative and most awake, and then right, like I peak, and then I'm out and I can go to sleep. For mm-hmm. morning people, it's like they wake up and it's like, it is a lovely day, and I'm going to be bubbly and cheery. Just like, <sighs> yeah. Yeah, today's going to be good. It's like, going to be wonderful. Okay. I'm going to get some coffee. I wake up and I'm just like... Yeah, I know. Like, I'm I'm a zombie God, for a good fuck. two hours. <laughs> I'm a zombie. I'm just a zombie. So I don't... For real? I, so what, how the fuck does that... I wonder if that's like genetic. If it's something like... And by the way, we're the ones that get the stigma too, which I think is fucked up. Like nocturnalish people. We're the ones who everybody looks down at. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, really? Like, oh, you stay up late and wake up late? Is that what you do? Okay, I wonder where you where your life went wrong. <laughs> Whereas with morning people, it's, it's like, oh, like, she's a cheery awesome. morning person. It's I, more accepted for like the morning person. Well, yeah, the schedule, the like the the schedule in the U.S., but in most places, it's like it goes based off of like the old farmer's schedule. Like, all right, gotta wake up like six thirty, like six o'clock rises. in the morning, five thirty in the morning, maybe. And then what we gonna do is we gonna tend to the chickens. Then to the cows, and then we go mow the fields. That like goes back to the, like the fucking <laughs> daylight saving shit. Makes no sense. It's like yeah, I hate that no shit. one's like depending on the sun anymore. You could st- <laughs> stop. There's like eight farmers left in the country, and they're like, we got we got to do this for the farmers. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And by the way, the daylight savings. Somebody told me that the daylight savings. Oh, if they were to keep it permanently, what it's supposed to be then it would mm-hmm. be the shittier time year round so it would be like the getting uh, getting darker earlier year round so i was like all right then just leave it permanently on daylight savings time <laughs> like the yeah. thing that yeah the thing that it, like it's not the daylight savings time that annoys me it's that you're changing the clocks like don't change the fucking clocks like leave the fucking clocks where they are like pick one and stay with it but pick the shit yeah. pick the shit that keeps it brighter later 
like like my boy lives in London now, and he's like, in the summer, it'll just be like bright as fuck at like nine o'clock at night. And you're like, what? Like people playing golf and shit, like teeing off at like seven thirty at night. Like, I feel that's like that's not better. Like yeah, but then they have. I think they have the reverse too. Like in Alaska, you know how in Alaska they have like, oh, this is like the night fucking month. <laughs> like it's just night for a month. You heard about that? And like it'll be sunlight like at fucking for like a month or some shit. Like in Alaska, you never heard about this? Mm-mm. There's some places where it's like light for seasons and dark for seasons, where it's not. It's not not a daily thing. It's not like sun rises, sunset, sun rises, sunsets. It'll be like light for a month, dark for a month. I'm making up a month, by the way. I don't know if it's a month or a few months or it whatever it is. It doesn't work. So it's still going to get dark. No. It, it'll stay light for like a fucking month or some shit or like Forever? a season. Like the whole, like, for the like whole, a season. Like 24 hours a day or light? Yes. Yes. I mean, it'll be variations of it. So it'll be like, I don't know, a little more like cloudy at certain times, but it'll be light. Like, you'll look at outside at three o'clock in the morning. It'll be, there will be light there. It's How crazy. It I know. It has to set. No, like, it doesn't. <laughs> could we ever have that? No. And it's because of their that, position right? on the globe and shit. Like, we're in, like, I don't know, the middle somewhere. <laughs> we sound like such idiots right now. <laughs> Oh, we're like, we're like, like, like on the middle of the globe, bro. Like, do you not get that? <laughs> this is our bro science talk right now. No, but it's true. I don't know if it's Alaska or if it's somewhere else, but like, there are places where. That's why I was saying, like London, it stays lighter, darker during the summer, and like, I don't know if it's the reverse in the winter, but like, there's weird. Like, it's not like this for everybody. Where you know, for us, in the dead of winter, it gets. It gets dark at maybe like four thirty, four ish here, in in New York. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like that everywhere. It's not like it's getting dark at four or four thirty everywhere. It like it varies. We should just all be on the same time. Like why the fuck like is California three hours or four hours behind us? Well, that like, makes sense the because their light is so much different. Like so, if they were on the same clock as us, they're three hours behind. So behind New York, I mean, so um. If they had the same time as us, there it would just be like, it would just be weird. Like they'd wake up and it would be, if it's ten o'clock here, it's seven o'clock there. So I don't. Why am I so bad at figuring out and doing the basic math on this? <laughs> it would, no, no, it hour, would just fuck like, up their times. It would fuck up their times and the light, and it would make it so that it, it it's not. You know, because they're so far away, so the light for them is different for us. So that's why they're literally like behind on the clock. But what I don't know is no, fuck them. Like they should just like. <laughs> but I don't know. deal with it. We're living there. But I don't get like the lines for the time zone. So is it like wherever the lines are? So like if you have one foot on one end and one foot on the other line, is it like you're? It's this time no, here and a that spot time here. You drive to Indiana because I think going back to New York, we changed we changed time zones. Yeah, and an I hour. think it's like in the middle of Indiana. Oh, it's in so the middle of Indiana. Like, yeah, I don't think it's like starts at the state line. So I, I don't know how it works, but if someone like works at a rest stop, like right on the other side of it, and they like they gotta have two different times. <laughs> they gotta yeah, have two watches like, with different times on it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty crazy, bizarre. Right? Yeah, that is weird to think of. But like, I mean, I guess it has to be like that, right? Like, there's gonna be different time zones for basic reasons of fucking light. So you're gonna have to adjust the times. But, like, you got to do it with a line. You can't, like, fade it in, you know? Like, imagine if that's how it worked. Like, okay, there's a zone. The zone is, like, 10 miles long. For each mile you go, it's, like, 15-minute changes in intervals. That would be so weird. Oh, well, that would suck. That would suck more, yeah, because then there would be so many different times trying to fade it in with it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're idiots. Damn. We, don't... <laughs> we sound like tough. idiots right now. Like, bro, you know how the light works, bro? Let me tell you, bro. This is how it works. <laughs> we're we're um time zone deniers. Like there's climate change deniers. We're yeah. times. Well, I'm a time zone denier. <laughs> Just fucking put everybody. They don't exist, the bro. Time they zone. don't exist in nature. All right. Time zones are fake, bro. Social construct. Time zones are fake. It's fucking created by the Chinese so we could get more work. <laughs> manufacturing. <laughs> They're created by the Chinese <laughs> to steal our manufacturing. It's a hoax. Um, I yo, bet you if someone told that to Donald Trump, you believe that shit. He t- he tweeted it. He tweeted. Uh, Climate change is a hoax. Oh, you're saying for time zones. Yeah, you can convince yeah. that guy of anything. If you get somebody who's convincing enough, he'll go out there and argue for it. And he'll also convince his dumbass followers. Um, I had this pizza like for the past three days because I'm a fucking fat ass. Mm-hmm. But have you ever had the Costco brand pizza? Kirkland? The Kirkland pizza? 
a frozen or like the frozen from they're there. frozen pizza um no but i had frozen pizza yesterday not kirkland but i've ha- i've had that brand before i feel like for like chicken nuggets or something though okay you got to try the kirkland pizza the their pi- their Dang. brand pizza so you go to costco and their brand is kirkland i think their mm-hmm. pizza mm-hmm. oh my god like it was Good? fucking it was great like i was like i think i almost preferred it to if i had gotten like pizzeria pizza like, I think I preferred it to legit, like, pizzeria pizza. Like, it was that good. Because you know me. I like, uh, no, homo, thick and doughy pizza. Like, <laughs> I like I don't like the thin crispy, and I know a lot of people think that's fucking crazy, but I like the thick and doughy pizza. And But how does the thick and doughy translate to the oven? So, it, it translated well. And this actually, I was just going to get to the point that this wasn't even just thick and doughy. It was, like a, it was like a midway between, like, a thin and crispy and a Sicilian. And it was just, it was just right. It was just good. So I've had like the last three days and I was thinking, how the fuck did I live this many years and not know about this? Cause they probably been making that pizza forever. And look, I like Elio's, oh, like yeah. Elio's, uh, frozen pizza, but this shit blew Elio's out of the water, son. Like Elio's That's superior Elio's was reeling. Elio's was in the corner with like a bloody nose and a eye socket hanging out. Like they it was like, oh, oh I've been defeated. Like this shit straight Tyson knocked out Elio's pizza. Kirkland that good? frozen pizza. I'm telling you, it was. And it's, it's cheaper too, probably. Because I don't know, I don't, I don't know. It was the best frozen pizza I've ever had. Like the be- and I'm, yeah. I'm a well-known lover of frozen pizza, and that's the best yeah, you frozen do. pizza I've ever had. I had it every day for like three days now. It's ridiculous. On some like you wouldn't even try some other shit. It's like you'd be tight if someone came out and was like, "Yo, I got Tombstone." You'd be like, "You ain't got that Kirkland shit." <laughs> no, I mean, I'd still like, I'd still eat the Tombstone. I'd still eat the Elio's. I'd still eat the Bagel <laughs> Bite pizza, but. I, there's no doubt that number one on the list is number one on the list. What made you stumble apart? Like, what made you like change it up? Like, why was why what? How it was just new. It was new. It was new, and I was like, let me try this. <laughs> and he was banging, and now I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna go back. I don't think I. <laughs> I'm talking That's about it like it's a girlfriend. Like, I don't think I'm gonna go back, bro. I think it's over. <laughs> I think it's over with Helios. I told her get your stuff and leave. <laughs> no, it was amazing. I'm recommending it to everybody, and no, I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> but I'm recommending it. it is I'm, you're making me want to try it. I'm gonna go try it because I just had frozen pizza last night and it was good. I need you to try it and I need you to text me immediately and let me know your thoughts because I don't want to do I don't want to do what my friend Bobby did to me with the movie The Departed, where he was like, "It oh, is okay, it's the it best movie ever, ever, ever." And then I saw it and I was like, I mean, "It was all right." <laughs> But he had played it up so much that I was I was like, there's no way it's going to meet your expectation because you told me it was just like literally the best movie ever. So I might be doing that That's with this like pizza all... right now, but it was, it was nah, for me, I loved it. I loved it. It's got to be somewhat good. Um, People do that with like comedy shows or like uh, things on like videos on YouTube that mm-hmm. are supposed to be funny and they put you on the spot. I think that should be, there should be a law to not make somebody watch something while they're like watching you watch it. Oh, I know. You get right? what I'm saying? No, no yo, Kyle, 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 yeah, I got this, I watched this, this dude, and it's like, watch this video while I'm watching you, and then like, you start looking at the tool bar to see how long the video is, and, and you like, feel the awkwardness, <laughs> first of all, if anybody does that, and the video is longer than like, two minutes, fuck yourself, because yeah. if you're making me stand there for two minutes, and, and feign interest in it for the first 38 seconds, to maybe then get interested in it, like, that's just wrong, and you're right, they'll tell you, yo, you gotta watch, you gotta watch, you gotta watch, you gotta watch, and the second you start watching, they're like, they're not looking at the screen. No, they're looking at you. And they're like, mm-hmm. they're waiting for so you it. You got to throw a smile and then, on first. Because I'm a, de- I'm a decent person. So I'm going to be like, no matter what it is, I'm going to be like, <laughs> like I hit him with the, I, I'm going to do this no matter what because I like you, but don't put me in this position ever again. Like, why are we in and this it position? It always ends at the end of it. Like, yeah, it was funny when, when I was watching it. And then we're like, <laughs> It probably, it probably and that's when they're more fun. aware. Like when they're more aware of it, they're like, "No, oh, no, you had to be like, you had to be there the first time where I saw it." Yeah. yeah, you know, because of that, like I've I've gotten to the point where I'm super hesitant to show somebody some shit in real life like that. You know. Well, no, it works better with like when it's some informational shit. It's fine because someone will share it with me. Like someone actually showed me. They were like, yo, this is your boy, right? And it was um, one of your videos. It was the one I told you about um, when they got mad at the guy for saying the N-word. But oh, yeah, 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 the CNN weren't. the CNN thing. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so someone shared that video with me, and I hadn't seen it. And I was like, that's 
makes total sense. You right. Know? Yeah. And so I wrote back to him. I was like, yeah, I totally agree. But when when it's just like something that's supposed to be humorous and they don't know my type of humor compared to theirs. Yeah. I'm like, eh, OK, that wasn't that funny. Yeah. No, comedy is a tricky one, man. Com- because mm-hmm. because there really are really different like flavors of the kind of comedy you're into, like the kind of comedy that my mom would be into versus the kind of comedy that I'm into. <laughs> It's just no, it's not the same. Like, would she laugh yeah. at fucking Louis C.K.'s bag of dicks joke? Suck a bag of dicks? Like, well, what do you mean? How, do, how am I supposed to do that? Am I supposed to suck off each one individually? <laughs> and, like, how does that... Like, my mom would be like, oh, my God, this is not okay. And I'd be fucking dying. So you can't, like, if she tells me, oh, you got to see this or this, it's like, eh, I got to take it with a grain of salt because we're not on the same frequency. And I feel like it's rare that you get somebody on the same frequency. Like, me and you, we love, we both like Louis C.K. a lot. But I'm sure there are other mm-hmm. comedians where we would be a little not in sync on it, you know? Like, there might be some yeah. comedians where I'm like, I love this comedian. You're like, I don't know. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's why, I, I mean, I've had your frozen pizza before. That's why I'm curious. I'm going to try this <laughs> I'm Kirkland's. I'm curious. But when it comes to, like, yeah, I'll, try, I'll give it a try. But when it comes to, like, movie critiques and there's like some random old dude on like channel seven, like office Christmas party was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Never take that. It wasn't funny. I'm just like, nah, probably was fucking hilarious. No. Yeah, no, that's right. So me and you had this conversation on on an old Kyle and Corin, but there, like there's no such thing as a good or bad movie critic. Like it's just, Mm -hmm. Because there's nobody has like a central philosophy or like thing by which they're judging it on. Like they're just saying what they fucking like and don't like. You know what I'm saying? So like, Mm -hmm. so like I could explain why I like movies I like, but the reasons why I like them might be the exact same reason why somebody else doesn't like it. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. like... 100%. 100%. It's just hard. It's hard to do something like critique a movie. And by the way, I don't even know how I feel sometimes. Like, if I'm in a good mood and I go to watch a movie, just the fact that I'm in a good mood might bias my feelings towards the movie. Like, I might already be in a good mood and then I see a movie that's kind of shitty, but I, I was in a good mood, so I kind of enjoyed it. And vice versa. If I'm, like, not happy about some shit and I'm going to see a movie and I don't like... And I'm watching, I'm like, this is bullshit... Maybe I'm only saying this is bullshit because I already felt like shit going into the movie, you know? Yeah. So there's just so many factors and variables when talking about a movie that it's just hard to get any real judge. And then also, I don't I don't know about you, but I'm kind of shitty at picking up like the 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 ticks and the foreshadowing in a plot. Like I know some people who could watch a movie once and some shit'll happen and they'll be like, "Oh, they notice the foreshadowing, and they're like, oh, I know that this shit is going to happen later because of that shit that happened at that time. <laughs> Me, I'm like, no. Actually, you know what it is? It's funny. I caught one moment like that in Breaking Bad, and I was proud of myself that I caught it. When that, that bitch lady who, who got them the methylamine, like the business lady who's super uptight, yeah, she, she, yep, yep, yep. she put the stevia in her coffee, and they like zoomed in on her putting the stevia in her coffee or her tea or whatever it was. And I was like, oh, he put the ricin poison in the stevia. And then later on, they, that you know, we learned that that was true. He told her that. But I, I caught myself catching it. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. I finally caught on to like foreshadowing. Most of the time, I never catch on to it. Like, you know, back in the day, like with ex-girlfriends, they'd be like, they'd wa- be watching movies. They're like, ah, ah. And I'll be like, what are you on? They're like, you didn't. See, the, I'm like, what? No, no. What are you saying? Like, explain to me. They're like, well, what had happened was the... And I'm like, oh. Because you were just too busy trying to get your dick sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an encapsulation of my life. <laughs> I'm sitting in class trying to learn. I'm like, oh, somebody suck my dick. What's going on here? <laughs> no, but even... All jokes aside, even when I'm paying attention, it's like... It's like I'm... I just can't catch on to all the things in a movie for whatever reason. Like, all the yeah, things I catch in politics, like, I can notice, like, if somebody does something in politics, I can tell you nine out of ten times what their motivation is and why they're doing it because I know enough about their history and I know enough about the way politics works. In a movie, I don't get the... Like, they could drop all the hints in the world and I'm like, huh? huh? Well, you picked it up better in Breaking Bad because you were, you know, more... You watched the show a little bit more. A movie is just a one-time thing, you know? You gotta... You, you got to remember shit from the 
opening scenes or like what's happening like while in, still keeping up in the walking dead line. i was so i was so bad at this that even in the walking dead when they reintroduced morgan to the plot i was like mm-hmm. i think he looks familiar but who is he again like i forgot how sad is that he was a big fucking he was like the main character at one point yeah and i had forgotten yeah. i was like oh wait i know he looks familiar but what like what happened with him again and then I had to see like old clip, and I was like, "Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I remember him now." But like, that's how bad I am. Even like a fucking main plot character. Yeah, I'm not good with that shit either. I'm always the dude like, why, why would he go back into the place if they're like, "Oh, you don't remember when he uh, how jumped are you off the with bridge to cut his ass?" How are you with awkwardness? <laughs> <laughs> how are you awkwardness with... in 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 what? So like in a show or a movie, if it gets too awkward at one point, I will. F- fight the urge to change the channel like i get i get like it affects me like on a random show you're, you're like even if i'm into it so like i was telling you one time back in okay. the day that i was watching this movie that was so good it was bad that's how i described it and i was mm-hmm. like i know people I don't know what the fuck i'm saying but it was a movie about like a tsunami or something i forget the name of it at this point but like and but there were so many parts in the movie where it was so intense emotionally that i was like i have to change the channel i have to change it because it's just so good that it was bad like, it was so mm-hmm. good in making me feel the negative emotions that it wanted me to feel that, like, the rush of those negative emotions made me, like, I got I to gotta tap out. Give me the remote. You know? So it was so oh, good it was you, bad. You How know? are you with that? Can you watch a movie and when it gets awkward, you're like, I'm good. I could just override it. Uh, yeah, I feel like I override it just because I'm too lazy to, like, invest into something else if I commit that long. I feel like that's how I am with uh, The Book of Eli when it's on. The Denzel movie? Yeah. I, like, I, I enjoy it. And I always want to change the channel, but I'm like, ah, just leave it on. And I just watch the whole movie always. There are some movies that I will literally always turn it on when it's on. Every time. Like, there's now, I've never Everybody not. Everybody has those. Yeah. Next Friday is one of those movies for me. Whenever Next Friday is on, I turn it on. It doesn't matter what's going on, I turn it on. school on TBS, always rock the, I'll rock the whole movie. Next Friday? No, old school. Oh, old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good one. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. So I do it with that. I do it with the movie Tombstone, the Western movie Tombstone with uh, Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer. It's about Wyatt oh, Earp. I definitely change that shit right away. I do it with that. That's it's from like '93, really? but it's like one of my favorite movies ever. From when I was a kid, I used to watch it. It was fucking great. Um, I do that with Money oh, there's Talks. The one with us. Oh, Money Talks is another classic one. But I'm gonna hit you with a banger. I, I hope we're on the same page here. Anytime it's on, I gotta watch the whole thing. It's the one with Sandra Bullock. And um, what the hell is his name? He plays the Green Goblin or – no, not the Green Goblin. The guy um, – Ryan Reynolds? No. His, yes. And he's like – he has to marry her or she has to marry him because she's Canadian. I never saw that one. I never even saw it. Oh, my God. What? What it's what's it called? TV. I can't think of the name right now. No. So oh, no. We'll, I'll, we'll look it up. Ryan Reynolds and Sandra yeah. Bullock. We'll look that up. Um, so – I'm 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 kind of sort of team like you know I'm cool with watching a chick flick every now and then like I could get into a chick flick like yeah, I like I watched I that one with Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis one time and I watched uh not the Notebook the other one that the girls always love I think I had seen the Notebook once but there was one other one that girls always love um um that I had seen but they're not bad like but again that's another one where when the emotional moment gets too emotional I'm always like ah, I'm going to have to change it this is too emotional yeah some of those get pretty pretty like the Mandy Moore one I watched when I was really young but I never the one with like cancer and shit but oh, I never I never there's saw... one with uh Oh, man, I'm blanking on all names today, but she like switches places with a girl and she's like 14, but she's really like 41 years old. That doesn't sound like a romance yeah. movie, is it? Is it a chick flick or no? Yeah, it's a chick flick. She's like her mom and they switch places. Do they fuck a dude? <laughs> yeah, they both fuck. They both fuck Tom Hanks from, from Big. <laughs> I was about to say, really? Really? He did fuck Tom Hanks? That's awesome. <laughs> he probably did fuck Tom Hanks. Yeah, no, I, Damn, I, I'm not, I can't think of any fucking movies. I fuck, I fuck, right I fuck with the chick flicks from time to time, but not always. You got to be in the mood yeah. for it. You got. How about horror movies? What do you like with horror movies? You like horror movies or no? Um, not really. No, I don't like scary movies. I don't either. I like the idea. Just they always of it. kill the black person first. Racist ass movies, man. 
I like um I like the idea of it like oh this is gonna be creepy and it's really gonna get in your mm-hmm. mind and it's gonna be like it's, you're gonna like be glued to the screen. I like the idea of it, but then in reality, when I'm actually like fucking sitting there listening to it, I'm like, I I don't like this. I want to change the channel. Although, did you see the purge? I did. I saw the purge. Pur- I enjoyed the purge. The purge was okay. The purge oh, yeah. was okay. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it that was a movie that it was on TV a couple times, and um, I watched that one. And you threw it on, and you kept it on. Oh, yeah. Barbershop is another one. All the barbershops I always keep on. I that don't even necess- for the record. I don't even necessarily like all the ones I just keep watching. Some of them, most of them, I do. I'm, I like most of the ones I watch over and over. I like and I keep on. Some of them I turn them on even though I don't like it, and I'll watch the whole movie. Baby Boy, I actually like Baby Boy. <laughs> Baby Boy with Tyrese, remember that? No, I don't remember that one. Oh, you never saw Baby Boy? Oh my god, you gotta watch Baby Boy. It is the hoodest movie remember. ever, and it is the best movie ever. <laughs> really? It's about Ty- it's Tyrese is the main uh, character. And it's about he gets into some trouble and he's got his girl who's like kind of crazy, but he's also kind of crazy. And Snoop Dogg plays the bad guy and Ving Rhames plays like plays like Tyrese's mom's boyfriend and they get into it. And it's just I, I don't know. It's one of those movies. I just got it. I got to turn it on when it's on. I'm like, I got to watch it. It's baby boy, man. It's just classic. I thought of the Ryan, the Ryan Reynolds one was the proposal. Side note. Oh, the proposal. That, when did that come out? Is that yeah. recent? Um, I don't know. No, definitely like five, ten years back. But I'm a big fan of Ryan Reynolds. Shout out to him for making good movies. Okay, what was he in other than this and like Blade Two or some shit? I'm like all the movies. Deadpool. I never saw that. First of all, let's just uh, get this out there. Women want to have his babies. Like he's a good looking dude. Every woman on the planet wants to have his babies. There's never I, been a woman ever babies. who says, I don't want his babies. Everyone wants his babies. My mom wants his babies. Everybody wants his babies. I just, like, a, a, every celebrity could be good looking because they get in shape and it's like they're, like, I just saw yesterday The Rock was the sexiest man alive. <laughs> I'm like, no, he's not. He's bald. Well, and, like, he's. Yeah, we spoke about this once before. It's kind of annoying that, like, they do it only based on celebrity status. As opposed yeah. to, like, you really want to find the sexiest person alive? Like, you send a team of fucking researchers into, like, the heart of Brazil or into, yeah. like, random places. And you will go to a random town and there will be, like, the small town girl in there that is just so gorgeous. And it's actually, like, you know, if you did a poll, she would actually win. As opposed to if you do a poll of, like, you know, whatever, when Jennifer Aniston was the sexiest woman alive or when The Rock people is... Should, like, People Magazine should do an actual, like like fucking best looking person because the rock is not the best looking person yeah just off of like what a, i mean i don't know what a regular person is supposed to look like but i would guess the person that like someone would choose is somebody with hair <laughs> <laughs> oh oh that's nothing kind of a devastating people. point all people yeah, no. What? So it's funny. Now I'm coming full, full circle on this. What would what what would you do if you were totally losing your hair to the point where it was like a matter of time until it's gone? Are nah, you shaving it? it? Are you are you doing hair plugs? Are you doing a wig? Are you doing Propecia and fucking Rogaine? I'm definitely not doing a wig. <laughs> Yo, not for nothing. This is gonna sound or crazy. I would never rock. <laughs> no, no, no. This is gonna sound crazy. But that dead ass might be a, a lot of people's best option is a wig. Because they're they have wigs that look like real, like it looks it like has real to hair. be real. It can't be like two toned. Like you can't have some <laughs> two toned. Like it's a car from the eighties. <laughs> I got that two tone wig, son. <laughs> what if that came into style like a two toned like toupee? Two-tone like the bottom toupee. of your hair was Mister Wonderful, and the top of your shit was just like a blonde toupee. It was like blonde oh. and then just like brown oh. around. I I want to answer that I would shave my head, but I I don't think I'd look good with a shaved head. I think I'd look nah, terrible. But but I guess you get used to it. Yeah, you get used to it, but like it's got to be one of those things. Because there are some people where right when they shave their head, you go, oh, you look good bald. Like we were just talking about with Walter White, with Brian Cranston. In real life, if Brian mm-hmm. Cranston always had a bald head, he'd look fine. He'd look good. It's like, oh, you're mm-hmm. bald, but it, it works. If somebody like me has a bald head, it's like, oh, you lost like a big part of what made you like not ugly. <laughs> Like, you're fine with hair, but once you lose your hair, it's like, oh, when did you get leukemia? 
<laughs> like we're laughing, but that's true. That that would be the first thing people think if I had a bald head. You know. <laughs> no, it's true. Is it not true? Like that's true. Um, and now they go straight for the jugular leukemia. No, nah, they would. They'd be like, "Why? What? Um, man, what? What's up with your head?" <laughs> like that's what they're yeah, thinking please. if they see me bald. But I think you might be in the same camp, though. Like I think if you yeah, no, my shit. Is, I got an awkward shaped head. Yeah, if you shaved your head, it would be in the same camp as me. Like it would, there, that'd be an issue. People would be like, "What? Yeah. What? What's wrong with you? What happened? Are yeah. you okay?" <laughs> that's what people would ask you. I know I'm not. Whereas, like, Joe Rogan, he shaves his head. It looks fine. Yeah, he looks okay. He looks fine. But he he's starting to look he's starting to look more and more like Dana White. They're yeah, just, like, that is a little awkward. Together. Isn't that awkward? Remember that video you showed me, like, Dana White, like, shutting him up or some shit? Yeah, because uh, I think he was going to announce something or ask the question, and he just straight sunned him. He just, like, it's crazy how he's, like, an alpha male on his show or whatever but then he goes to the like the ufc and he's just like dana white's a little bitch dana white that that guy creeps me out a little bit he's super conservative right he was at the i think he is RNC yeah. joint. i think he is um i think he was the only businessman who came out and said donald trump like helped him or they they did a deal together or something or other yeah, anybody who would like back, I don't know, if I don't like it, all the Republicans. If you backed any of the Republicans like in early on in the process, it's like what are you doing? Like really? You picked Ted Cruz yeah. or Jeb Bush, but Donald Trump also. Like you pick that guy, like out of everybody in the country, you look at him and you're like, yeah, that guy should lead us. Like what is wrong with you? Like that guy's like, he's just so he's so ridiculous. He's like a parody of a human being. He's like if you had to sit down and make a fictional character and this fictional character is going to is going to, you know, be like the greedy boss in like a Christmas story, you know? Like the guy who like ruins Christmas and fucking tells people to work on Christmas and shit. Like it's Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's like he's got this ridiculous like spray tan. He's like orange. He's got like blondish hair that's like twisted all up in ways to make him look young somehow even though he's not. But, like, it's the best he could do to, like, fucking twist it. Yeah, it's got, like, bobby pins in it when it's fucking windy out and shit. Like, he's super duper vain. He's He brags like there's no tomorrow. He's a liar. I mean, he's went bankrupt six times. Like, of all the people in the world, the way he talks is hilarious because it's obvious that he's, like, not that bright. So he just kind of, I don't know, he just talks in a very, like, punchy way. Like, it's tremendous. Believe me. Let me just tell you. I mean, this mm-hmm. is... It's, it'll be bigly. It'll be amazing. And everybody needs to know that. It'll be the best thing. We're going to make America great again. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make the country great. It's going to be tremendous. And uh, people will be saying, this, this country is the greatest country in the world again. So it's just all simple. How does anybody look at that guy and they go, yep, that's it. That's the leader right there. Like, what do you mean? Though? How do you... It's like you're falling for... It's like watching. It's like watching the country in real time go through the same thing as you're a father and you're watching your your daughter start to date when she's in like 8th grade and the guy she's dating is in like 11th grade and the guy's wearing a leather jacket smoking cigarettes wearing sunglasses when it's dark out and we're looking at her like you're not dating him like that's not happening mm-hmm. you're I'm not going to let you date him it's like, Dad, fuck you. I really like him, and he's so great. Todd is wonderful, and he treats me nice, and I don't know what you mean. And and meanwhile, you could tell just by looking at the motherfucker, he's trouble. Like, you're, you're wearing yeah. a leather jacket. You're smoking cigarettes. You're wearing sunglasses at night. You got a fucking muscle car. Like, no, no. But that but what ends up happening? She dates the dude anyway. And you're like, mm-hmm. no. That's Donald Trump. Don, that guy's president, and we're, we're all just sitting here. Like no, yeah, it's because he straight lies. Like amazing, I, I, he does it in an amazing way. He just get, he just says whatever, and he gets away with it. But the new thing now is that I saw. Um, uh, oh, I think it was like Samantha B did uh, sent one of her reporters out to one of these guys who started all these like fake news. I feel like fake news has become like the new cool thing, where it's just like there's so much fake news out there that like I don't even know what the fuck is real anymore. You know? Yeah. Um. I got a lot to say about that. Did you want to finish your thought or no? No, I, yeah, I'm done. That was oh, okay. my point. It's, um, it's just, it's fake so news. the fake news thing, okay, I feel like that's being manipulated and exploited. So 
are there fake news stories that are like obviously fake, but they caused a problem? Yeah. The obvi- <laughs> the clearest example being the Pizza Gate story that like blew yeah. up on Facebook, but it was just t- complete and utter horseshit. Like, really, Hillary Clinton is running a child sex ring out of a pizzeria in Washington, D.C.? How fucking stupid do you have to be to believe that? So, but there are people who believe it. So, like, that's an example of fake the guy news. Who went and shot them. Yeah, well, uh, did he kill anybody or no? Or did he, I know he went in with a gun, but did he actually, did they get him before he did anything? I think he killed someone. Okay, I don't think he did, but he, that's neither here nor there. Okay. We agree it's fucking crazy mm-hmm. that that story is out yeah. there. and So, yeah, that's fake news, and that's a problem. And fucking Alex Jones with his sa- Sandy Hook is an inside job, people. Let me tell you, the government, it was a hoax. They didn't kill any kids at Sandy Hook, yada, yada. Okay, so that's all fucked up. But oftentimes, like, the mainstream media now, so, oh, fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news. Meanwhile, the, the mainstream media does fake news all the goddamn time. I mean, Hillary Clinton herself, who did a speech yesterday, the other day about, oh, fake news is such a problem. You voted for the war in Iraq, which was based on fake news. <laughs> and you never admitted, like, yeah, that was fake news. Like, Saddam having weapons of mass destruction and Saddam doing 9-11. Like, that didn't happen. And everybody believed it. All the mainstream media, everybody pushed it with zero evidence. Right now, I think it's happening with the whole Russia thing. Like, everybody's been saying about Trump. Like, uh, oh, the CIA, the, whatever. the CIA is now saying that Russia hacked the U.S. election for Donald Trump. Okay, well, hold the fuck up. The CIA is saying, you mean the same CIA that their fucking job is to topple foreign governments and put in puppets to United States corporations? The same CIA that fucking organizes death squads? That CIA? I'm supposed to trust that fucking CIA when they say anything? So, but now liberals, uh, people who have always distrusted the CIA, are like, no, the CIA says it, so obviously Russia's interfering for Donald Trump. I don't believe that. So it's funny how the same people, and by the way, they've presented no evidence. So I'm open to it if they present the evidence and I'm wrong. Okay, great. I will report the news and I'll do it with a smile on my face because facts are facts. But they just say it and they, and they give no evidence. So what's annoying me about the fake news thing is that the same people in the mainstream media who have been saying fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news. Everybody go go crazy, go nuts. The next day they come out there, out there, and they they're presenting the fake news stories. The CIA says that Russia hacked the election for Donald Trump. Really? Are you a demanding evidence, or are you just the fucking stenographer to the CIA? And the answer is they're the stenographer to the CIA. And if they push out fake news, hey, it's, we're doing it, so it's, it's okay. okay. Let's only get mad at fake news that we don't like. So let's get mad at the fucking Pizzagate and Alex Jones and all that. But we'll push out our own fake news and everybody shut the fuck up about it. In Syria, you see this too. A lot of shit about the war in Syria where they just like, they still pretend like, oh, the government is the worst of the worst of the worst and the rebels are so moderate. It's like, well, no, the rebels include Al-Qaeda and ISIS and and like a bunch of really bad jihadists. And they're like, oh, oops. (laughs) <laughs> like they just they cover it like that's it's a good point. Yeah, no, because th- I don't know. It's the fact that the well, system. So what do you think the media should do? Like do more research and not. Well, the problem the like, problems with corporate media. On. The problems with corporate media might be terminal because corporate media is just a joke. I mean, they're you have like six. We all want to have just a breaking news story or some shit like that and be first to like just fire off some information. Well, it's deeper than that. The problem's deeper than that. Is that you have six corporations. And mm-hmm. the corporations basically control all the news and information, and they are people who go to the same fucking cocktail parties as the politicians. So they know them, and they're all rich, and they all like each other. So you're going to get a world view from the mega corporations, the the from old media, the mainstream media. You're going to get a world view that coincides with the the elite and the establishment, and. That's why they don't cover real issues in any serious way. They don't cover climate change very well. They don't cover poverty. 50% of American workers make $30,000 a year or less. That's insanity. You know? So you have a, a mm-hmm. lot of poverty. You have homelessness. You have rising income inequality. You have money in politics, which has just totally ruined our government and made it an oligarchy. You get no serious discussion about that in the mainstream media. A lot of it is by design, how, how, the, how the system and the incentive structure works. So the solution to that is run them out of town. Old New media has got to take over old media. New media is basically what we're doing right now. I mean, we're just having a conversation on Kyle and Corin, and usually we don't even get into politics that much. But like, you know, news shows online and fucking um, people who actually do journalism. Like there's a lot of good journalists out there, but their work is more like in running in print outlets 
and they don't get this kind of coverage that they deserve. Like, all the journalists who are really on the ground in all these crazy places getting all the facts, they're the real heroes. Fucking Wolf Blitzer and the other assholes on TV who water it down and don't even give you a full picture, they're the problem. So, you know, the answer well, that's is new what, media. that's happening... My bad. No, go ahead. I'm done. I was saying that's going to happen with, like, TV in general. People are doing that with, like, just not having cable anymore, getting... Uh, I, I just found out about this... Uh, Amazon Fire Stick or something. Oh, yeah, can, yeah, 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 yeah. You can have Netflix, HBO Go, still live stream all sport packages and shit like that. And no one's going to need cable anymore. So if I was a stock person, I'd fucking, whatever that housing market shit where you could sell against like someone to do bad. Yeah, yeah, short like, it. Short it. You'd short yeah, it. Cable yeah, cable TV's going away. No one's watching. Like I texted you about that Kevin Can't Wait shit, the new Kevin James yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing as King of Queens. It's just like everything's recycled and yeah. old. And Although, like, this to be like fair, we both do like King track. of Queens. <laughs> yeah, no, King of Queens is awesome, and yeah. Kevin Can't Wait wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. But no. they just got to get rid of the old laugh trackers and the old just yeah. stereotypical same shit. Yeah, no, that is going away. I think that I think that is going away. And look, it's replaced. So on my uh, cable provider right now, there's a YouTube channel. So you go to the channel and you type in whatever you want in YouTube and it plays. It's on a smart TV, obviously, but like it'll play. So earlier today, I was watching a little bit of Joe Rogan on my TV from my YouTube channel. So I could watch myself on there if I wanted to watch myself. Like, yeah, there's there's becoming a, now it's it's mixing like TV and Internet is like mixing and it's becoming like the same thing and one entertainment medium. But yeah, I think you're right that that old it's a dinosaur way of entertainment. Like at some point there was fucking like tap dancing like oh let's go watch the fucking opera or let's go look at a painting and like that was mm -hmm. the version of entertainment and then that was kind of replaced by like well now we have this music thing and now we have this fucking you know movie thing and then again that evolved now we have tv but all oh, the tv is very limited and it's just a few channels and then that grew and then it grew more and then now yeah you're in the like the dying phase of tv like the idea of a sitcom like, okay, it's obviously super scripted and super fake with the laugh track in the background. I think that's being replaced by, honestly, what we're doing right now. Like, this is a new kind of thing that's rising in popularity. The idea of just mm -hmm. having a conversation, chatting, talking about whatever. And you have some people who like it and who listen. And it's just the next phase of... I feel like, I, in a weird way, I'm going to give Donald Trump credit here, even though I was just shitting on him before. But, like, in a weird way, he's ushering in that next that next kind of politician too because for the longest time like you had like, like the Bill Clinton politician like the Bill Clinton style where it's like alright now I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to point at you like this but I'm not going to point at you like that because that's too aggressive and my people taught me that I got to talk like this because it makes you feel comfortable and okay and we're going to go on script and we're going to say the same things over and over and we're going to try to be really smooth and not offend anybody and we're going to say a lot of words but not say a lot of substance and then a guy like Trump came along, and obviously Bernie came along too, and they blew up the system. I mean, they come along and, you know, Bernie, he was, all right, what we have to do is raise the minimum wage. What we have to do is get out of the wars. What we have to do is, uh, uh. like, it was just, his. he's talking in a really, like, punchy, direct kind of way. No flowery bullshit. Mm -hmm. Trump, even though he is bullshitting with what he's saying, the way he talks is tremendous. Believe me, it's just I'm going to uh, we're going to make America great again. That's what we're going to do. Again, short, punchy sentences, and it's it's also the stream of consciousness talking. If you listen to Hillary Clinton talk, it's obvious that she's on a script, and it's obvious yep. that yeah. If you listen to Bernie talk, you listen to Trump talk. Oftentimes, they're not on script. They're just fucking riffing, you know. And that that's the thing. Like the way I'm talking to you right now, it's I always felt like it's easier to follow along with what somebody's saying when they are following along with what they're saying. So if you're reading off a script, oftentimes the words are coming out of your mouth, but it's not being processed in your brain. You're just like a v empty vessel that's saying things that have no real meaning attached to it. But me and you talking right now, we're having this conversation. Everything I'm saying to you is being processed and coming out of my mouth, and I'm following it along with the audience who can follow it. So there's a way of talking that's more natural that pierces into your brain better. It just gets in there better and stays there. And that's like a new thing, I feel like, with the internet. The internet is one of those things where they don't let, like, they don't allow you to bullshit at all. Like, you can't get away with anything on the internet. Like, you, well, you think you're going to be do some slick shit and pull some shit on people on the internet? Like if, you, like, if you look at a news segment where they try to, like, be sympathetic to somebody who's wrong about something, it's like, bleh, bleh, fucking dislike, 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 dislike. The internet doesn't let you get away with shit anymore. 
That's true. It's mad true. It's so it, yeah. It's times are changing, but it's cool to see. I was just thinking as you were talking, like something like theater, how that like withstood the test of time, where people still will go out to like a theater. Like that's been there for fucking to hundreds see, of hundreds of years. To see like a play, you mean? Yeah, like, to see a play or a Broadway show. And I was even trying to think if like that would change, like if that would start having its own channel on TV. But I don't. It wouldn't. I'm a well-known hater of plays. Do you hate plays or no? No, I enjoy Broadway plays just because it's like I, I like seeing people acting and, you know, doing that stuff in person. I think my feelings towards plays, it, it's biased in the same way that like my feelings towards Beyonce are biased. So like with Beyonce, mm -hmm. like everybody loves her so goddamn much that I feel compelled to hate her. <laughs> that mm -hmm. like not a single person is like, you know, Beyonce, mediocre, like middle of the road kind of. Everybody loves her so much that I'm like, yeah. fuck you and fuck her. And I feel the same way with plays, like with this Hamilton thing. Like, Hamilton, 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 Hamilton. Everybody fucking Hamilton, Hamilton is the best thing ever. Oh, my God. I went there with my friends and Stacy, and then we had a salad, and then we had some drinks, and we went to go see Hamilton. It was the best day ever. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck you and Hamilton in his ass. And I feel like, yeah. but that's well, just me being a dick. Fucking groupies. It's just a fad. No, the people are groupies. It's just a fad. Like, if everybody says Beyonce's good and you listen to some shit, you're going to be like, okay, maybe she's good. Because if you say she's bad, people are going to be like, you're crazy, man. Like, she's Beyonce. Yeah. Or yeah. If, like if someone went to see Hamilton and they're like, it's okay. It's it's good. <laughs> I'm not going like, to wait like three days online for it. Yeah. like, And I don't like musicals either. Musicals are just weird to me. Like, you remember this? There was a South Park episode where they were making fun of musicals and – because I, always, I often think, like, why do musicals exist? And then it was, like, the, in South Park, it was because the guys wanted to get blown. And, like, the, the musicals <laughs> hypnotize the women to blow them. And, like, in the, they'll be singing a song in the musical about, you know, whatever they're watching, like, cats or some shit. And like, <laughs> we are cats, we are cats. You should suck his dick. Cats, 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 cats. <laughs> and, like, they'd slip in shit like that. Like, you should play with his balls. Cats, cats, subtle. cats. <laughs> And I was like, maybe that is why musicals actually exist. Like, it's this hypnotic technique to make women go like, oh, I want to fuck my husband right now. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Definitely not, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely doesn't happen. I usually fall asleep through musicals. But you know what I can't get behind? What? I don't mind Broadway shows if I don't fall asleep. I can't get behind concerts i don't i don't no see i don't fuck with concerts, concerts either but i'm not really a music person that much either like i have the music i like which is you know like i'm i'm into i like r&b i like 90s r&b 2000s r&b i like hip-hop i like some pop i like 90s music some 2000s music like i so i got what i'm into but i'm not like i'm not one of those people like you know how you meet a music person and they're a music person like yeah bro do you remember 1972, The Doors, when they performed at fucking Madison Square Garden, bro. And they'd talk yeah, about it. Yeah, like, what? Die hard, like the Grateful Dead fans. Yeah, and, people like that. Like, yeah. like Bill Collins or whatever. I never, I was never a music kind of person, so I definitely don't fuck with We're concerts. sort of like that with old school, like, like Hot Boys. We sort of have a soft spot in our heart with like yeah, no. Master P and like. Trick Daddy and all those people. Well, yeah. So Lil Wayne and Birdman back when Lil Wayne yeah. was like really young, actually. Yeah, no, like, so I have the music like, I'm into, but like, could you imagine imagine me at a Cash Money concert? It would be the funniest thing ever. <laughs> like, they're in like New Orleans in the hood, and they're all like listening, and I'm standing there like but rapping along with pretty... it. And they're just yeah, waiting for like, me to say the N word people... to shoot me. What? <laughs> even those people going to like a, a Master P concert. It's just awkward. Like, no, there's some hood ass people to be standing around, like Steve, <laughs> singing the lyrics. Of Steve Harvey. <laughs> Steve Harvey actually has a good bit about this, and Steve Harvey's a dick in a thousand ways. But he had yeah, a good a bit fan. about this from Kings of Comedy. Where, sorry, this isn't a fucking plug, even though it looks like it. I was just really thirsty, and I always do drink seltzer. But um, I sold out, bro. Sold out to Big Seltzer. But Steve Harvey said, um, like, have you ever been to a rap concert, like? They try to tell you to do shit. He's like, motherfucker, I paid forty five ninety five. You do shit. <laughs> like they'll be like, blah 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 blah. Everybody scream, motherfucker, you scream. I'm paying you. <laughs> He's like, how they're gonna be forty seven people on stage? Every damn one of them has a mic. 
you can't hear what one of them is saying. <laughs> so yeah, no, nah, he's right That's about like, um, rap well, concerts. When you go to like do it yourself restaurants, like my dad was like, uh, I think there was a new spot that opened in White Plains. It's like a fondue place. He was like, Yeah, you go there and you you put you put your own meat on the thing. I'm like, No, I'm don't not do that. paying mad dough to like cook my shit. Yeah, like no, that's, that's why that's I'm going up. out to a restaurant. No, that's so true. Like first of all, so there's a Korean barbecue is banging, but Korean barbecue yeah. you have to cook some of it yourself, and it's like. Don't, don't, don't fucking, fucking make it, prick. Like, what are you doing? I don't want to fucking do this. Like, the only thing I'll tolerate is a buffet, but that's because that's you just put it on your plate. It's already made. But if you want me to make some shit, oh, fuck you. Fuck you. That's wrong. <laughs> that's, I was in Hawaii and the place, it was like a breakfast place. Don't get me wrong. It was, it was, it was banging food. But they're like, you want to do your, do it yourself, make your own pancakes? I was like, no, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> like give it to a fucking chef. To like make some banging pancakes. Like mine are gonna come out like burnt. Like Ugh. I don't, I don't, I'm not cooking my own food. So going back to the music thing, like when people cry at concerts and shit, when there's like you know whatever some band like Coldplay, bro. Ugh. Oh, we went to go watch Coldplay and she cried in my arms for hours. Like what the fuck? Like and what's up with music? Like sad music. Like I mean, I guess I get it to an extent because like if you're going through a hard time and somebody broke up with somebody and you're listening to like the the breakup song or some shit. But it's like I don't know how like you could like that song all the time because if you're happy, like let's say you're in a relationship and you're happy and like the the sad song comes on, aren't you like like I don't want to fucking hear this. I'm happy. I don't want to hear about this fucking person breaking this person's heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, shouldn't there be a thing that it's relative to the mood. I mean, I guess I'm maybe I'm weird because that's again what happens in movies for me sometimes. Like I'll be in a good. Well, I mean, mood. you've got to have like slow songs for the world to like go around. But it just goes back to my thing of just like people are just fucking groupies. Like, why are you crying at some fucking concert and this guy's singing about something that happened in his life and like give? I shit. relate to it. Like yeah. they understand me, even though it wasn't even that person that wrote the song. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, like I'm I'm an asshole because I'm a well known hater of some of the most popular musicians. I think Beyonce's massively overrated. I think Adele is massively mm-hmm. overrated. And I'm gonna get hate mail just based off that. But you gave That's me the face for Adele. You like Adele. Adele? She's definitely a yeah. No, I, I mean she's definitely a good singer. I don't I'm it goes back to the world's sexiest person. Yeah. There's probably another person out there who could sing just as good as totally. Adele. It's yeah. just she has that platform to be a Adele. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, I so guess like, like so that, she's very good, but I'm not gonna pay her mad money and show her mad love because I've heard good singers before. I guess that's why those shows do really well, like the like the American Idol shows and shit, because like they're actually yeah. attempting to try to get to the best singers out there who have no notoriety. You know what I mean? Versus like the hierarchy of like if you look at how in sync got famous and like the backstreet boys it was all because one really really creepy dude was a pedophile and wanted to fuck him i'm not kidding that's what, who, that's like, literal who, what do you mean like their their manager their or manager lou perlman a guy named i think his name is lou perlman i watched like a uh, an e special or some shit on him and uh-huh. so he was this really really creepy fat guy who was a pedophile and he just wanted to fuck kids. <laughs> so he was a businessman and he had earned his money elsewhere and like he wanted a way to get closer to kids. So what he did is he got involved in the music industry and he became like this big time manager and he would like he would meet with the different like he's the one who was the the, the brainchild of InSync. He's the one who was the brainchild of the what? Backstreet Boys. He was the one who was the brainchild of LFO. Remember LFO? Summer yeah, Girl? They were, yeah. yeah. He did, like, all of them, and they all have stories. I think some of them still deny it to this day. Like, some of them are like, no, Lou was a good guy. He never did that. But the dude from LFO, like, the main singer who actually died of cancer a while ago, which is random. Yeah, I think I heard that. um, Mm -hmm. But he was on Howard Stern once, and he laid it all out there. And he was like, you should listen to after. And everybody listening to me right now and me and Corin, go listen after you're done listening to this. Go listen to that because it's an amazing interview. He talks about how Lou Pearlman would, like, call him into their office and, you know, be like, he, he tries what? some slick shit to see them naked and, like, see their dicks and shit. So, anyway, this is a long way of me saying, like, a lot of the like a lot of the shit that happened, it's all through, like, accidents of Hollywood. And, 
Like, this guy being a massive pervert who wanted to see little kids' dicks. Wow. Like, sync came together because this pervert was a pervert. And he like, okay, <laughs> let's create this group. Okay, you're going to be this person. You're going to be that person. And then he did all the groundwork of, like, I'm going to make the calls and get you on the different TV shows. And then they put in the hard work. And then they blew up. But it all stemmed Dang. because this guy had a fucking out-of-control libido when he wanted to see little kids' dicks. So There's always weird shit that's going on. That happened one time with... Uh, I think it was Facebook or, or Instagram, but someone had said like change your profile picture to a cartoon character of your of your time frame or something like that, and everyone was changing it to their time frames. And then this could be totally fake news, or, but someone wrote a status and was like the voice of reason on it. it was like don't change your profile picture to a cartoon character from your age because it was started by a pedophile who just wanted to see how old you were. Um, so whatever age. Like cartoon character you put, they would send you a message depending on that. And yeah, it's like, probably I thought fake. Thought about it, I was like, that's probably fake. It sounds fake, but then I was like, maybe it's real. Like if you put like a Hey Arnold from '90s, this person was like, all right, he's younger. Yeah, no, people get creative. They can get creative when they're being creepy, man. Like, like if somebody's trying to, like the world. Like Jared think from about Subway it. going to like the Philippines to find young fucking kids. Basically, all the things that men have done. Let me retract that. 85% of the shit that has been done by men, like the amazing shit, is because they wanted to fuck. Like, you're mostly doing... Because it's hardwired into you. And it's like, okay, you want to, you know, provide and you want to be a leader. But you also, like, you want to fucking spread your seed. You want to fucking skeet, skeet, skeet like a water hose all up in bitches. (laughs) (laughs) So... Except for like Albert Einstein, like he probably just really wanted to do math. Yeah, but then so then it gets weird in that other direction because like okay, so the guys who were doing it not for like base sex sex urges, oftentimes like like have you ever heard the term idiot savant? Like there's somebody yeah. like you're really really good at one thing, but then everything else mm-hmm. they suck at. Like people who can't mm-hmm. even tie their shoes, but they can they can play the best fucking symphony and or piano fucking thing ever. Like, I feel like a lot of it is that, too. Like, if usually if you excel at one thing, like, you're lacking in other areas. Unless, unless you're doing it because of what we said before, which is you were just a dude who's trying to get women, so, like, you're a fucking... Like, think about all the rock stars ever. Like, maybe some of them did it for the sake of the art of the rock or whatever. Like, oh, we love mm-hmm. it, and it sounds good, and it's just my passion. But I'm willing to bet a lot that that's at least partially tied in with I'm doing it because I want to fuck everything that walks you know i think it starts off with like i'm really passionate about music and you do your shows and shit and then along comes some females who just start pussy popping and then you just <laughs> booty like, popping on yeah, a handstand like bt after yeah. dark <laughs> <laughs> like tiger woods when he was growing up was probably like i really enjoy golf and then one tournament there was probably some chicks outside of his hotel room and he was like i could get down with this yeah, no, but it, it's funny you bring him up, too, because he, with his 87 sex scandals, remember, he had sex with, I believe the fact is, 96% of the women on the planet. <laughs> like, Tiger Woods had so many fucking affairs, it was ridiculous. But they're, like, some of his mistresses have said, like, no, he, it was ridiculous. He was like, he wouldn't stop fucking. Like, he, like, that's... So he's a yeah, monster he a in the on the course, but he's behind the scenes. He's like, ah, I got to fucking just come all over the place. And even yeah. this is gross, but I'll say it anyway because it's true. John Daly, the fat golfer John Daly, like the yeah, guy yeah, yeah. who drinks a lot of beer and hits the ball far and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has said in interviews, he did an interview with Howard Stern, and he was like, yeah, I'm a sex addict. Like, all I do is fuck. <laughs> and he's like, what? He's like, yeah, I just don't stop fucking. I, fuck, I need it like at least four or five times a day every day. And it's like, oh, See, wow, something. that's so that's one of the it's like we don't you don't even realize it because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes with different people. But like most people who excel at some shit, they're probably just well, just at, at one thing. And you're so passionate about that. Like I'm thinking of Albert Einstein and how he probably was so passionate about math that he definitely had some skeletons of some weird shit that he liked to do just because he would probably spend all of his time just doing math. I wonder what Mr. Rogers was into. Was there like there was the guy from? Oh, B- he was definitely some weird shit. So there's the guy from I think it was on the BBC or some shit. This like you know beloved figure in in Britain who like he was 
come to find out, he was like a big time pedophile, but he died before they well, got him on the anything. Blues, wasn't the Blues Clues guy uh, doing weird stuff, Steve? Maybe. Or was he doing like, I, drugs or something? I don't like know. That? I feel I remember hearing something about him too, but I don't know what it was. Um, but there was the guy for the BBC. Again, I forget his name, but he was he was like a pedophile, but he died before anybody like was able to to do anything against him, and like it was his whole career. He got away with it. I wonder, like, how many. Is there anybody who's just totally good? <laughs> like, there's always some weird shit attached to it. You're either, like, fucking, you know, an idiot savant and you're good at something, or you're, like, the people who really excel at some shit or doing it because they're sex-obsessed. And, like, all the Wall Street CEOs who fucking doing massive amounts of coke and, you know, I, I made fucking $33 million in the past three months. It's like, well, yeah, but you're also a fucked-up person who probably, you know has massive, massive issues, and you're like a legit sex addict who can't stop fucking. And it's weird how it's like a package deal. You never get the person yeah. who's like excels, but then who's it's like, perfect. oh, and they're just yeah. totally normal. Like, you know, that's what they do. And they'll just eat some Or dinner. even if they are, we'll find something on them. And yeah, try something. And, you know, just dig dirt on them. Something. I mean, even, even if it's not weird, there's always something going on. Like, again, to go back to Tiger, and I just happen to know a lot about him because I like golf, so mm -hmm. he's a good example. Like, apparently, like, when he was in his prime, he didn't even care about it as much as, he didn't even care about as much about golf as people thought he did. Like, he always was torn between being in, being in the military, because his dad was in the military, and he loved the lifestyle and shit. He was torn between that and golf. So, he would, like, he actually trained with Navy SEALs as he was the number one golfer in the world. And apparently, damn, yeah, true. apparently he was like, he was more into the training with the Navy SEALs than he was into golf. So he would go and play golf and he'd win everything in sight, but he didn't even really care about it that much. It was just like, okay, I can do that. That's easy. I got that shit on lock. But to him, pushing himself was when he's training with Navy SEALs and doing all these insane things. That's impressive. I didn't even know that shit about him. But it what it shows you is there's always something going on that we don't know about. Like, okay, yeah. so you're good at golf and everybody thinks you're obsessed with golf, but really in reality, what you're again, you're fucking training with like a Navy SEAL. Like, why? He's like, I don't know, I like it. Okay, well, that shows like cuz then I'm sure like other people like Phil Mickelson maybe, maybe he was the one who was really obsessed with golf and he just was never as good as Tiger. You know what I mean? Isn't he like a douchebag? Didn't he try and steal money or something like that? Wasn't he doing some weird stuff? Uh, there was stuff? a weird like insider trading thing, but I think he settled out of court or something. But yeah, yeah I don't fuck know. Fuck him. Yeah, no, he's got he's some weird some friends. He's shit. got he. I mean, he wears a hat that's like a fucking firm, like some financial firm. Like if you're a golfer and you're wearing a hat that's like a financial firm, like fuck yourself. Like what are you? What are you yeah. doing? Oh, I got yeah. low battery. We gotta we gotta cut this bad boy off. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Kyle and Corin could have went on for 72 hours, but we're cutting it off at two hours because my battery's about to die. All right, so that's all I got, man. You got anything else? Nope. All right, love you guys. We'll see you next week. Corin, thanks as always for doing it, brother. Peace.